Test tubes and Tesla coils, clockwork brains and burning oils, copper, brass, explosive jelly, his mechapede policed New Delhi, invented the radio transmitting toe, played poker with theremin, Tesla and Poe, harnessed cold mood light to power airships, and distilled antitoxins from postnatal drips, entropy, fading his life away before the world could ever see. Dissipating, evaporating. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fluffenhammer. Roll the music if you so wish. Not every man truly dies. Bravo! That's a very good rendition. What was it, Adam? Was it Abe's that, Odyssey? It, it was not. That is <laughs> lyrics from. Um, uh, oh my god. It's a band called Abney Park, and the song is called. I wrote it down in my little book of um, cold opens, and then forgot okay. to write the name of the song down. I've got to send you from. The, in fact, I've got to send you the books, actually, Adam. I've still got them here from the Liber Chaotica, the, the poems. Oh, yes. The, Liber Chaotica Nurgle, because they will make such brilliant cold opens. Oh, I, I, there's one in the Liber Chaotica Nurgle that is so good. It's actually a really good poem. Mm. Uh, so I'll send you that over at some point. You have to send me your address and I'll post them. I will endeavour to remember to do that tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, and I'll see if I can find. I've got here the Liber Chaotica Zeech and Nurgle for you, and I've got the Liber Chaotica Horn as well. I oh, don't wow. have separately the Slanesh one. I missed that. So. No, no. So I think you should like put a, a little prerequisite on on before you do that, George. I think you should mm -hmm. make Gruffs promise that if you send him these things, he has to yeah. read them uh, and do an audio rendition of them for the the. Oh, Fluff that would be Patreon. so good. Yeah. That would be I'm so, so good. I, I tell you what, they're big, though. There's a lot of shit to get through in these. That's why it's a Patreon. And that you break <laughs> down into multiple... You, you don't Obviously, we're not... Gruff don't do it in a year. Breaks it up into, like... They would be good. 12 sections? Would, you know, they would work. Yeah, you, they yeah. would work as performances because they're not written like... They're not written like the fluff books are, you know, where everything's no. just set down. They're written mm. as though they're from the perspective of a, uh, a Templar. Like a Sigmarite mm -hmm. Templar who's exploring the nature of um, of Nurgle. So, from the way you've always described them, George, they always come across to me as they're almost because they're almost written as a diary. It's almost Lovecraft, yeah. like HP Lovecraft Very style. Much. Oh, I, I think kind of yeah, thing. definitely. Oh. oh no! What is that thing at the window? It's it, it a is Nurgle that. penis. Yeah. Oh no! I mean, like <laughs> the, you know, the Liber Chaotica Zeech is very that. Because as he's writing, he's getting more and more corrupted, but he's opening himself up to chaos. So he's mm -hmm. starting to see things like dance around, and his his mind is starting to go on these strange voyages into the realm of chaos and stuff like that. It's great. It's they are really excellent books. I mean, they're a bit out of date now, obviously, because yeah. they're set in the old yeah. world. This is long before AOS or even the end times is a glint in anyone's eye, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, these but they're still... interesting to see what year they're actually set in because oh, do they that's... come after the old world game that we have now? Uh, that's a good point. I don't know. I'm not sure what year they're set in, but it does tell you somewhere, mm -hmm. <laughs> somewhere in all the gump, it does tell <laughs> you. Um, uh, this be a year, it's a year we don't really know. You can sort of work it out to a certain degree because they talk about historical events that have happened. So mm -hmm. the, um, the the ravages of Gorthor, that's happened. Archaon's okay. first war against the, yeah. the Empire has happened. So, yeah, it's way after where it's the way old world after is. the old the, yeah. the old world. It's way after the old world. Because like, Archaon isn't even around, is he? Nope. He's not no, even like born, born at this point. So. No. It's way after that. It's sort of, I mean, like, the setting is kind of towards the end of the old world. Mm -hmm. It's where the end times would have occurred if they'd occurred at this point in Games Workshop's history. You know? Yes. 
if they hadn't like tried to uh, get another edition or two out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And of course, I mean, like, there's no mention of Baylorcore because Baylorcore hasn't even happened yet. Um, yeah, in, which in may a roundabout seem way, a staggering omission, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird because Baylorcore comes in mid 2000s yeah he comes but on once the back he was of there he's always been there yeah right yeah. he comes on the back of more time you get all this build up there was a narrative campaign they ran wasn't there where there was this creature was, yeah. called the dark master and nobody mm -hmm. knew who it was nobody knew what this entity was it crashed into the old world and he had these you remember the little emissaries the messengers the sorcerers yes. they had who went yes. around like spreading the word of the dark master they're like little shaman mm -hmm. guys and eventually it was revealed that this creature was Balakor and that he was responsible for more time uh, and that he was mm -hmm. the first demon prince and whatnot. And it was actually quite a prolonged exposure that he had. It was. It was. I mean, once he kind of kicked off, he kicked off in a big way and yeah. he was kicking around for years. One of the, the most horrible things about Balakor is that uh, if anybody went to Mordheim, you found yourself in Mordheim. As in, <laughs> if you went to Mordheim in the present day of the old world, uh -huh. you would find yourself reliving all the things that happened in Mordheim. Oh. All the spirits and everyone who died there were forced to relive everything over and over again. Pre-Meteor or post-Meteor? A post meteor. Post meteor. So pre not, pre meteor the wouldn't be that bad because it's yeah, just a normal that'd be all right. place. It's, yeah. it's just a normal Empire City, yeah. then, right? But yeah. no, post meteor. So like all I the horrible <laughs> chaos stuff, basically. Pre meteor is just the um, that song at the beginning of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. So it goes the baker with his baking, and post meteor is the live action Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Except with more strip joints, because didn't it get like very um, raunchy as well? Because uh, all of the the mercenaries coming in. So they had what, to have more different time establishments. Or Beauty and the Beast. Well, well <laughs> hopefully more time. I wouldn't know about the live action Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Disney does for their properties these days. God. Take up the mercenaries with the whole whore. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Oldest profession in the world. I'm sure that more time had some. Oh, of course. It I would, bet the Skaven have some. Yeah, that that's not even. <laughs> you don't want to go there, really, do you? To be honest, I mean, you do if you're yeah. scaven. If you're just throwing lumps sure. of cheese at a lady on a on a on a, like, on a stick. Scaven standards of beauty, like they worship disease, and yeah, you just don't want to even think about it. To be honest, <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, as they say. speaking of scaven and uh, things being beautiful, I've got scaven tied. Really? You've got it, haven't you? You actually got the yes. box. That's awesome. Uh, I have it twice. Oh, what? No. <laughs> You're an idiot. I remember I a man that complaining now. that I have too many clan rats. This sounds like <laughs> a, a repeat of that man's uh, adventure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, what happened was um, I did a deal with David. Oh, no. And I got his Skaven half of his. Um, I sold my Stormcast half to my mate James. Uh -huh. So brilliant. Excellent. So, um, yeah, I've painted... Everything but the clan rats. Oh, I wow. have painted five <laughs> oh, of the clan gosh. rats. Um, Goodness gracious me. Are you going to ask me the question, how many more clan rats is there to go? <laughs> uh, too many, clearly. I don't know how many. 75. Uh, I have 75 clan rats to paint. Uh, oh, Adam, Mr. White, there's a, there's a blast from the past. One of George R. Martin's hmm. like early TV Adaptations, the Beauty and the. Do you remember the nineteen eighties Beauty and the Beast? Yep, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman and Linda Hamilton. Yeah, Jesus. Yes, that's right. God. It's, yeah. Do you remember where that that TV show went? I can't remember for the life of me. I, I was a kid. I was so young when that was on. Same, same. But I went back to it in the late nineties. I, I remember enjoying there. it as a kid. Was it any? Is it any good? Does it stand up? First two seasons are the most schmaltzy shit yeah. you've ever seen. <laughs> I imagine, I mean, do, you, yeah. do you remember the premise of it? Yeah. Where Leo the... had this second sense that every time Linda Hamilton's character was in danger, yes. he would come running. Yes. Right? right? So there was that. But then season three, you mm. find out that he's not the only one. Right. There is an entire civilization of beast men living under New York. Okay. What there I'm a beast Hundreds man. of thousands. Well, yeah, almost. Oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, just animal people and they're they're all like 
bastard children of this mad sorcerer god. <laughs> okay. That doesn't weird. sound like the story I know. That sounds really <laughs> <weird. laughs> <It's laughs> An interesting fun, route. Though. Yeah. yeah it sounds kind mm. of fun. I might go back and watch it. But just be warned, it's like, on one hand, you've got mad sorcerer god beast children. Yeah. On the other hand, Linda, ha Linda Hamilton accidentally finds out that there's a embezzlement happening and gets in danger. Oh, no. So Leo right. has to come running. Right. <laughs> oh, <okay>. no. <laughs> Tale of two halves, yeah. Oh, very much. Very much. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite things about that show is um, when they it, it got really popular, uh, magazine started doing interviews with Ron Pillman and all mm -hmm. of these uh, lasses who were very excited about the big, sexy, lion-like man saw Ron Pillman and went, yeah. well, shit. Yeah. Oh. He's an amazing-looking guy, but not <laughs> oh, gotcha. not beautiful. Yeah. You know, he's he's, no. he's striking, isn't are, he? Are you saying there were he's... places for like him in the circus back in the day? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying there was places <laughs> for him as siege weapons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The man looks like he was hewn from rock. He what? does. He's, what he's movie is it looking at? where he... Oh, what, what's the uh, season of The Witch? He's in Season of The Witch, isn't mm -hmm. he? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As the secondary uh, character, and he doesn't look yeah. out of place in medieval mm -hmm. armor. No. 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 That's a weird film. It comes to something where they couldn't afford to keep Ron Perlman around for the entire film, but Nick Cage stays. <laughs> yeah. Well, wasn't that, you know, when he was having a lot of financial trouble? Yeah, yeah. And he right, was saying so he, yes he, he, they could have paid him anything, let's be honest. Yeah, true. Uh, true. Although saying that, Nick Cage's old, like, late-stage career resurgence has been stunning. It good. has been really good, mm. hasn't it? Some of the stuff he's been mm. in lately has been amazing. Just weird silly yeah, films that are pretty good. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, Color, Color Out of Space is really good. I and loved then you've it. Got, uh, Pig. Mm. Mandy. Mandy, I loved. I thought that was fantastic. Pig is one of the best films I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. I fucking adore Pig. Mm -hmm. It's. I've watched it three times, and I'm still not sure what it is. No, it's, it's great. It, it gets advertised as like John Wick with a pig, but then it ends up being a film about our relationship with food. Yeah, it, it, it's a strange film, but brilliant. I mean, really well put mm. together. Yeah, and then um, uh, there's the one where there's, uh, there's the thing that makes all the parents want to kill their children, <laughs> which is... Hmm. <laughs> it's certainly a film. Anyhow, right. <clears throat> um, I will quickly ask you a question. Mm. Andy, ah. what have you been up to since last we spoke? Um, the Warhammer wise, uh, not much. I, I kind of hit a uh, a mental stagnation point where I I still need to finish off my second edition um, scouts. They're mostly done, mm -hmm. but it just needs the finishing touching on them, and then the base yeah. is done to finish them off. But I just keep looking up them and going, it, it's too hot. I'm lazy. I can't be bothered. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> kind of the, kind of the same for Mephiston. Mephiston needs a lot more work, but I've got a lot of the the base colors on him done. For yeah. the most part. Are you going to have a game of Second Ed with them, Andy, when they're done? Who <laughs> would I play? <laughs> Myself? So no, oh, it, well, man. I but can't I play with anyone, finish, so not really. I'd love to have I a go. I haven't played Second Ed for yonks. I'd love to uh, <laughs> give it a go. I really would. What, what I'm hearing is uh, all of us now have to start a Second Ed army. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what? Oh, you know what? If we did that, I would have to do the Eldar. It'd have to be the Eldari. No, that's rough. Army. That's rough because you have to paint them it. so clean. Yeah, they're so clean. About... clean. I know. George I know. gets the best result of this because he can still walk into a games workshop and buy those models. True, yeah. true. Yeah. At least most of them. Yeah, it's it is and funny. Like Eldar, despite like the range being expanded. They still look mm. pretty much the same. The armies look pretty, pretty much, much the same as they did back in second yeah. day. Yeah. So it's not. You, you can pick up the shitty Eldar Walker as well. Oh, the War Walker. Yeah. I, I love it's that. Was maybe a little mini. bit better than the Imperial Guard one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say it's yeah. probably a little bit better. That was mm -hmm. my that was my very first mini, the original War Walker. I loved it. War I loved Walker. it. So silly as well with the exposed pilot. So there's mm -hmm. like, there's no, and I love the way they bullshitted to get around it. Oh, I've got a force field, haven't they? It's like, fuck off. <laughs> Did the Imperial Guard <laughs> one have a force field? Say again? Did the Imperial Guard one have a force field? Oh, no, of course it didn't. No. No. So they, did they even try and bullshit with that one? Or were they no. just like, no, it's just done. No. Don't worry about they it. Just yeah, <laughs> the yeah. Imperial, oh, they just get shot. Yeah, They just get shot, don't they? <laughs> no, I, I mean, oh. I wouldn't say like it'd be, 
I, I'd never get the Eldar because I'm not a big Eldar fan, and mm. you have to be really like you have to be clean with second edition stuff. You have to be really yeah. clean with second edition Eldar stuff. Yeah, uh, so I'd, yeah. I'd never do it, but I'd like to see. Yeah. I'd like to see you give it a, a go, George. And you could have an excuse to buy the metal um, Avatar of Cain as well, which yeah. is a great little metal dude. Yeah. You could but kill yeah, a child if you throw it at them. Yeah, I used to have it, and God, that was one of the one of the ones I painted when I was young that I was really proud of as well. I don't know what I did with it. Mm. What I did with the damn thing, sadly. But you know what, Andy? You don't want to fight second Ed Eldar, especially if you've got a, an avatar, because the avatar yeah, yeah. is like so I, evil. I, I know how you beat them, George. Tyranids. Oh, yeah. Tyranids. <laughs> second Ed Tyranids. They just win. That does it. Yeah, Simple that will work. Definitely. That's the that's the army you don't want to fight. Oh, who are you playing Tyranus? You go, well, uh, n- nice game. See you later then. Yeah, you give up, a good basically. one. Yeah. yeah. The question then is, if we're going to do this, do I go seconded orcs or seconded Tyranids? We could do Orcanids. <laughs> you mix them one together. Of us do tyranids, really, don't we? I think you're only or... allowed to do Tyranids, Gruff, if you get uh, the the fat patriarch and the limo. That's the only yeah. way you're, you'll be allowed to do it. Oh, no, that's I do have the second Ed rule book over here uh-huh. with the um, oh, what do you, how do you call it? The get you by rule set mm-hmm. in there, uh, which oh, the, does the have a gene stealer yeah. cult army. Yeah, yeah, I have the uh, the gene stealer cult second Ed army army oh, list. Oh, awesome! I mean, here's the problem: we'd have to get, we'd have to have second Ed, and we'd have to have Dark Millennium and a couple mm-hmm. of codices mm-hmm. for it to work. Because Dark Millennium's got all the fun stuff in it. It's got all the war gear and psychic I, I, powers. I'd almost say oh. don't bother with second ed rules, at least for the first few games, and just go with one page rules. Yeah, just for the easiness easy sake and speed. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Not a bad I, idea I, what, the, be, the best way to do it is probably like one page rules and then mix in some of the more strange second ed mm-hmm. rules to get like a quicker but still yeah. second ed kind of experience. Well, like, Maybe like vortex grenades and shit like that, yeah. Well, yeah, and mi- mi- like, do you really want the bike rules? No, like, not no. really. You want some no, of the bike no. rules, but you don't want to go flamer all in rules? with the bike rules. You really want the flamer rules from Second Ed? No, yes. you don't. Yes, no. yes, you do because you want to keep rolling to see if they're still on fire. <laughs> yeah, right. and then ten turns later, yeah, they're still on fire, but they haven't died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, all I'm thinking here is orc shock attack gun. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. All twelve pages of that bastard. Hell yeah. Chaos <laughs> Dreadnought random table where it shoots yep. your own minis. I mean yep. bonkers. Good or luck. It literally <laughs> rampages across the table, crushing everything in its path, and then stops dead center in the middle of the battlefield where everyone mm-hmm. can target it. <laughs> that happened a couple of times in second ed, I can tell you. It's not what you oh. call competitive. That no, edition. It was fun. It yeah. was fun, but it was bonkers. It was, oh, it was yeah. just there was there was no way of playing it fairly. You know, it, no. like it, no. you, there was no way like there were tournaments back then, but how people played them, I just don't know. The the, the, the amount of stuff they would have to have prohibit. No yeah. no carn effects. I think no ninety four, no vortex grenades was no an actual vortex rule. Grenades, they well, were, they have they, to be. They were bonkers. Mm-hmm. That you know. They're they either super insane. useful, super devastating, or completely ineffectual. There was no completely consistency. Right. There was yeah. no non non whatsoever. No blood. Does the vortex does grenade go into the enemy army? Does it come into your army, or does it just yeah. sit in the middle of the map and not move and hit yeah, nothing? Does, does who knows? Like the, the inquisitor who throws it like fumble it and it just drops at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> and opens the wall at his feet. Oh, it's bonkers, honestly. Second, uh, <laughs> it was it was mad. It was mad. See, all I'm thinking of here is sleep over at Andy's house <laughs> at a weekend of uh, playing second ed or one page rules. Wow. Uh, you get one game. Ed. Yeah, it would have to be one <laughs> game because like there's no way you'd play any more. Um I always remember like the weird close combat rules in second ed, because they were like really abstract. Yes. They were really, really weird the way you rolled them and the way you 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 worked out things like there were the rules like parry. So if your if your if your models carried swords, they could parry, but some swords you couldn't. Like, like combat chainsaw, knives, you couldn't do it, right? Uh, chain swords you couldn't, but pawn hmm. berserkers could with chain weapons because they were so skilled. These, uh, it's like and it, it makes sense as well. Makes sense, but, but way more faffy it, than it had to be. 
does, but it's faffy as hell, and yeah. it? it's, it's it's like, oh god, really? David's just reminded me, of course, that there was a uh, a squat army list in the second dead get you by book. Mm, there was the black codex, yeah, there was, mm. there was. I always liked um, the way Drachnien mm. worked in Second Age. You know, the Abaddon sword. <laughs> Basically, yeah. if it hit, it killed anything. It was insane. It, it, literally, if you rolled a hit with Drachnien, things just died. And it's mm. like there was no roll, there was no save, there was nothing. It didn't have to wound, it just killed things. Demon Blade. It was the most yeah, but it was yeah. the demon blade of demon blades, yeah. Drachnian back then. It was like, whoa, what the hell, you know? But if you took Abaddon on your army, he took up oh, like, yeah. a third of your army yeah. points list. Yeah. He was bonkers. <laughs> yeah. He was he was, absolutely he was expensive. Insane. But but he was that character. I mean, he could kill like there was some greater demons he could have a go at, you know. I remember seeing Abaddon versus a Hive Tyrant uh, mm. many, many years That'd ago. That'd be a good fight. That would it be a was. Fight. Yeah. Uh, it, it, got, it got close. You know, Abaddon won. Mm. It wasn't an easy victory. What did the Hive Tyrant have, weapon-wise, do you remember? Yeah, it's a fair I can't. Point, this actually. is going back, like... I was wondering if it had, like, whip or sword or, like, um, acid uh, venom cannon or the, the other uh, bagpipe-looking gun. I seem to remember it had the whip. Okay, yeah. No, you're going back a long, long time. But what I remember is that people stopped playing their game and came over to watch. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Because <laughs> it was just like the uh, the guy playing Chaos was proper screaming, how are you still alive? Yeah. Because the Hive Tyrants were mental back then. I mean, those bone mm -hmm. swords they had could kill things, like, in a turn. Oh, yeah. In a turn. Oh, yeah. I saw those things taking out great demons and avatars of Cain and all sorts. Yeah. You know, they were... They were a very overpowered army with the nids. They were. They really wanted to sell that that miniatures line, didn't they? They mm -hmm. really went hard with it for some reason. Do you remember when the nids got their first proper battle report oh, against the Imperial Guard? <laughs> yeah, it was so it was silly. Stomp. <laughs> it, was, yeah, it was so it was silly. Absolutely unreal. And I remember going to the War Games Club and just saying to people, have you read this? It's like, yeah. Yeah. That was not enjoyable. That felt bad. Yeah. Yeah. That was... <laughs> it did. And you know, the worst of it was, like, you could see that there were just certain miniatures that you the, you didn't even need the rest of the Tyranid army. You had your Hive Tyrants, mm -hmm. your Carnif Carnifexes. Do you remember the stat line of Carnifexes the, in that? Yep, coda? the Screamer Killer. Yep. Tens, could tens, kill. tens, 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 mm -hmm. tens across the board almost. The Screamer Killer could one-shot a Rhino. Yeah, easy. Easy. It was... It was ridiculous. I guess what you could say about the weird rules uh, or stat lines for that game is it maybe maybe it would force you to do narrative rather than competitive because you yeah. kind of had to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you had no choice, really, because competitive just wasn't a thing, really. Yeah. It, I just don't know how you'd play second ed competitively, to be honest. Not without... Very altering, restricted. Yeah, mm. house ruling a lot. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot. Bloodthirsters were out. You, you couldn't, the, the Bloodthirsters were mental back then. They were legendary. They were legendary. Think Tarn effects, but can fly. I, I, th I think you, you could probably do, like, you don't use a Bloodthirster with, a, with an army, but you could have, like, a, a small squad versus one mm. Bloodthirster, and that could be, yeah. uh, do, like, a Warcry game, almost, and it's, like, yeah. a boss character. That could have been That's quite fun. That's not a bad idea. That could yeah. have been fun, yeah. Um, do you remember the Demon Princes back then? Mm -hmm. Demon Princes were weird. They didn't exist in the main army list. They were all special characters. All of them were. And they were the only things in the entire game back then that could have stats above 10. And they could I have really? Stats. Yeah, they could have stats of like 12. And I think what? Falspawn. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was bonkers. The uh, the Nurgle one, Falspawn, he had a wounds characteristic of 14 or something. <laughs> it, was, it was insane back then. <laughs> It was insane. And they the encouraged you to make that... your own. They encouraged you to make your own. Like they said, like these are just mm -hmm. templates. If you want to include a demon prince, make up your own, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what a time. The idea of like trying to roll on the uh, the little table when it goes over ten. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm gonna roll a minus six shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
got to roll eight on my d6. Well, fuck me, I guess. Mental. That that that, that mm. game was insane. It really, really was. It's just so random. I mean, there's so much luck involved in it. So much mm -hmm. luck involved. Yeah. I mean, half oh, the yeah. guns used to jam. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. You'd roll on the so sustain good. dice, and you'd get a jam result. And that, that you know, it, it, doesn't jams only start. happen if you do consistent fire? Like if you do a shot and then move, you're fine. But if you do like sustained fire, that was what jammed yes, the gun. That's right. So it's only if you're, you're in second dead, it was only if your gun had the sustained fire rule, which Bolters right. did, by the way, so half of your army there. Um, so if you if you ro rolled sustained, you'd roll the sustained dice, and sometimes you'd get, like, you know, extra sh extra shots. Yeah, Other but it's it's the, the gamble, the risk of do you yeah. want to... You probably yeah. shouldn't, but you can if you want to. You shouldn't, but, yeah, go for it. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, the 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 only other thing since I haven't really been doing that is I've been listening to more of um, uh, what's it, the Return of Nagash? Mm. Oh wow! Getting By through that Mike, and um, is that hmm? Mike Brooks, that one. It's the the End Times. Whoever did oh, that. Oh, it's the End Times one. Yeah, right. the End Times. Yeah. Is that what it's called Return of Nagash? The End Times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's. All the stuff that happened to get Nagash back on the the field. Yeah, oh, I'm I'm really cool. enjoying it. I it's it it's feels so very kind of similar to, um, the Siege of Terror, like the idea of it, because you you know yeah. the idea of the world coming to an end and all that jazz. I'm liking it more than why, what, what I've gone through so far with the Siege of Terror, because it feels big, but it doesn't feel almost overwhelming. Like Siege of yes. Terror almost has too many pieces that it needs yeah. to keep jumping between. While mm -hmm. I think, at least with this book, I don't know how the, the other books kind of flow, it's focusing on uh, Volkmar the Grim, uh, and it's focusing mm -hmm. on Manfred and Arkin, and yeah. then some Bretonians, and that's about it, and some dwarves as well, and that's it. It doesn't yep. feel... Uh, but they have mentioned other places and other people doing things as well, but it's not too... It's not, it, it's not too much for the senses yeah. to comprehend it all at once. I'm really yeah, liking all it. The what all the end times novels did and it's a really smart thing to do is instead of trying to retell the campaign book it they all pick out one area of the campaign book and they stick to it mm. yeah they all do it the um um the one with the dwarfs in uh with um Skarsnik and a skaven and everything mm -hmm. that never leaves Carrick eight peaks it stays in Carrick Eight Peaks for the entirety of the novel. Uh, see, it, I, I've just had uh, the the dwarves have their council meeting. So the kings mm -hmm. all got together and said, "Well, we're fucked. What should we do?" <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Daffith has got it in the chat. Manfred, aka that weasel. Yeah, yeah. I, know. <laughs> Manfred, I can just Manfred. hanging around like, haha, keck. <laughs> people forget. People forget. Like Manfred is responsible for the end of the old world of the old world. <laughs> mm -hmm. I he didn't had, know Manfred he, had long, luxurious sexual hair. Apparently, which it mentions in the book, and he shaved he it because really? he didn't want. Apparently, he got rid of it. He shaved his head because uh, he, to himself, apparently said he wanted a new look for his rebirth. But internally, he was like, "I don't want to be compared to Vlad." And Vlad mm -hmm. obviously has luxuriously long, long hair. hair. Yeah. yeah. So he's got obviously he's got daddy issues. He's like, nope, nope, yeah, bald. Really. <laughs> bald. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's, love it's really good. It's always good to see Arkin and uh, Manfred kind of bounce off each other. With yeah. Manfred being very emotional and Arkin being like, oh, 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 I'm dead inside. I don't yeah. care. I have been for like millennia at this point. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> There's nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only one of those books I didn't really enjoy was Malaketh. Um Which book is that? Oh, the, is it the Sundered King or something? Have, have they have they uh, done the audiobook of that one yet? Is it? Oh yeah, yeah, you have. Those okay, not, they've all been audio booked. Because the thing, the uh, first, oh, is that the um, uh the the one with the Mal yeah Malaketh on the front? So that's like three yeah, or four. Yeah. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, Curse of Cain, that's the one. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Lord of the End Times is really good. Return of Nagash is mm -hmm. really good. Uh, Rise of the Horned Rat is fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. Not that you buy Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I mean, literally, as a just as a novel by itself, it's really, mm. really good. That's the second one, right? For it. Uh, I think these are out of order, to be honest. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fall of Altdorf is really good. Death of the Old World was really good. Um. Yeah, I. 
this list is now moving into things that have nothing to do with uh, Warhammer. I remember the Archeon one. That was pretty good because it gave you a lot of like mm-hmm. background on where he came from and why you know why he operates the way he operates. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, they're, they've often got quite good character studies. I think mm. one of the things I really liked about the return of Nagash is that whilst it is the return of Nagash, Nagash isn't the main character mm. one yeah. way from. He's this overwhelming presence in the background. Which is kind of the good way to treat Nagash, really, isn't it? It's quite a clever oh, yeah. way of, of treating the character because he is so unknowable at this point. I mean, he's, he's it's he's such a, a long time since he... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's such a long time since he was human. The, that's a good way to treat him in fictional terms. They do the same thing with Angron in the 40k mm. novels when when he in when he occurs now, like in the Red Angel. Rather than having him be a character, it, it's other characters responding to him mm-hmm. as a, a sort of force of nature, and that that really works. That really works well. I didn't realize as well that necromancy was dreamt up by the dark elves, seemingly because there's some yep. there's some lines yeah. talked about there, and it's uh, in, it, it's talking like, well, you know, it was the, yes. your dark brothers that kind of gave us the idea, and then we kind of ran with it. Like, oh man, that's right. In the original background, there are dark elves that Nagash takes captive who come to Nehekara, and it's from them yes. that he learns the the original sort of really base form of necromancy, how to sort of twist. The uh, it's uh, what magic is it? It's the purple magic, isn't it? The purple mm-hmm. wind magic, amethyst magic, mm. to yeah, yeah, yeah. into black he magic. Them. He traps them underneath a uh, one of his pyramids. That's right. And he just tortures them until they yeah. start telling him how to do this magic. Which is kind of impressive because he's not a god at that point, right? No, no, he's just, no he's just, just a guy. Anybody. Just a guy. Yeah, he is born to privilege. He's like the he's the son of the equivalent of a pharaoh, but he's he's yeah. like the less son. He's he's nothing. He's nobody, um, and it's his fear of death that actually spurs him on to do what he does to seek out immortality. Good for him. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, right? He I made mean, something I, I, out of himself. He, he, yeah, well, he, he quite literally makes a god out of himself. You yeah, know? He, it's really well. He survives all the way to AOS after yeah. m- many times he's been killed. Granted, but you know, right. it's still pretty impressive for right. just a dude to do it. Just a dude, right? But just a guy. For in in the very first story of Nagash, way back in the in Warhammer Army's Undead, like the first book, Warhammer Army's Undead, he it it starts with him as a kid, you know, wandering the tombs of Nehekarar and looking at the those who have died before him. Mm-hmm. And I'd say it's about... more impressive than uh, humans that turn themselves into demon princes because they are oh, given yeah. the power. Well, yeah, and they're they're ultimately enslaved, right? Yeah, um, and Nagash is the okay. one that makes makes the power. He makes a new form of magic, effectively, which he, is like, oh wow, yes, that's he very bends, through sheer will. He, yeah, yeah, he bends like the entire metaphysics of the world around himself, like or like he, he transforms nature. Granted, he gets beaten by rats twice, so it's a bit of a fight <laughs> against yeah. him. But you he know, forgets, right? yeah, it's so brilliant. It'll all be that. there. Yeah, I love it. I love the fact that he just forgot because he's been around for so long. It's just like, yeah, they got me again. <laughs> Do you think there's a moment where he remembered, you know, when the necroquake oh, was failing and he was like, ah, oh, shit, again? <laughs> Not again. Rats. Those damn rats. Well, what about you two? What have you been up to uh, uh, hobby-wise? I mean, Gruff's got his, his rat tied. Mm. Oh, um, I've been doing my Death Guard still. Working mm-hmm. on my Death Guard. Got my Blight Lords. Uh, they're sculpted now. I've just got to paint them. Got some more Plague Marines done. Morty. Morty's done. Oh, nice. um, got to get him painted, but he's he's assembled, and he's a he's a fabulous, fabulous mini he is. Are you going to try uh, and get them all sprayed before like um, winter autumnish kind of weather comes along? At the very yeah, least. I mean, I don't, I, it, you know, things are so busy at the moment. They are so busy. I don't know if that's going to happen. We shall I hope see. you can, because obviously, like, it's the best time, summertime, to get stuff sprayed outside. And yeah. then you can just leave and paint it whenever you like after yeah, that. I'd love to. I'd love to, because I really want to get them off the ground. I'm enjoying the Death Guard a lot as a project. Yeah. Really, mm-hmm. really enjoying them. Such, a, a, you know, I've said it in other videos before, but that miniatures range is just oh, stunning. spectacular. It's so complete. There's something about the miniatures that feels so. It's it's redolent of the art that you find in like the Codex mm-hmm. books in in a way that previous Nurgle miniatures just weren't. You know, 
so yeah love them love them to bits uh been i'm just started reading um the new araman book araman undying mm-hmm. that's very good that, that that starts very very strong I'm, i haven't finished it yet that's the but, fifth book at this point right in the series yes, that is the fifth book yeah. apparently john french was saying it's going to be a new there's going to be another one as well so you've got like basically two trilogies or a sex debt mm. Mm, that makes uh, sense yeah it makes perfect sense uh, and it's very good. There's a lot of like politics in it about what's going on between Araman's faction of the Thousand Sons and the, the Thousand Sons that are still on on Sorciarius that are loyal to Magnus. Um, and there's 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 lots of like internal politicking, which I really really like. I really enjoy that, especially when they do it with the Chaos factions. It just seems to to work somehow. Um, so that's kind of cool. I, I read, I finished Harrowmaster, the Alpha Legion book, mm-hmm. and that was excellent. I've got to say, that was really, really, really good fun. Well, you know what's really fascinating? They've, you know how when they write the codices and the, the rule books now, they actually pay attention to what's going on in the Black Library and they incorporate the At last. <laughs> They've done, I mean, this and Har- Harrow Master was a really recent publication. They've done that in the 10th Ed Chaos Space Marine Codex. So you go to the Alpha Legion section and it talks mm-hmm. about, it refers to the characters in that book and the notion that when the Alpha Legion get together, on the rare occasions when they, they gather together in one place, they elect uh, a sort of, it's almost like a prime minister in a way, who speaks for them, who is called the Harrow Master. And that derives from that right. book. It's, it's, it's just cool the way they've incorporated that fluff, I think. It's really interesting. Yeah. That's really cool. And still, like, collecting mm. the 10th Ed Codices, I've got all of them thus far. Every single one of them. And I'm really, 10th Ed, I'm really enjoying. Really enjoying Managed to get a few yeah. games in against Graham, my my consistent opponent, and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's been What's a lot scores? of fun. Who's, who's who's winning at the moment? Oh, he's winning. He's, win- he's, he's winning. An old, he's, he's an older guy. He's he's been doing war gaming since before Games Workshop even existed. You know, he's a historical war gamer originally, um, and he's got multiple Warhammer armies from numerous different editions. Um, mm-hmm. His Ice World Tyranids have battered the crap out of my armies any number of times. Ooh, uh, and his his uh, Astra Militaria Navy is a is a real nightmare of a, an army to face. I can tell you. Um, but he's uh, he, I've played against these Tyranids in Tenth Ed, and that was fun. That was really really interesting to see how they work. That Shadow in the Warp ability that allows mm-hmm. them to impose like. Uh, battle shock tests on every and every, every one of your units once mm-hmm. per game that can turn the tide it can turn the tide it's really really good it's an amazing ability um what else has he got he's got um i haven't played against these astro militaria yet but apparently they're really nasty intent so you know that's going to be fun i've seen a lot of how the guard are they have got a lot of bite intended. Yeah, they're going to be they're going to be toned down. That seems to be what's happening when the codices are released. So the armies mm. that are doing overly well just tend to get balanced out a little bit. You know, yeah. I mean, it happened with the, the Chaos Space Marines. They were doing inordinately well <laughs> in there with their index. Um, mm-hmm. So they've just been toned down, and balanced a little bit. Some of the sillier yeah. like combinations that were never really intended to be used. So here's the thing. Do you think that's the right thing to do? Or do you think the better, cooler thing to do is to turn up the other factions? Because people like to find the broken, kind of overpowered stuff in like video games. And people they get annoyed do. when that's kind of changed out. So maybe the, the idea is to make the other armies have their weird broken stuff to kind of combat them. So you don't you don't lower the bar, you raise the bar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Problem, I mean, the problem is there are certain combinations that are just silly and become ubiquitous, so everybody takes them. You know, like mm-hmm. the one they changed quite significantly in the Chaos Space Marine Codex is the Abaddon Terminator Death Star. So in the Index, mm-hmm. Abaddon gave the... And this was not intended. Abaddon gave all of the Terminator, every model in the unit he joined, every Mark of Chaos. So suddenly, all of the stratagems that you could apply to units with a particular Mark of Chaos, you could apply them all to that one unit, which resulted in some 
absurd combinations. I mean, <laughs> just so stupid, it had to be taken away because mm. it just, it, I mean, it's still a Death Star. Don't get me wrong. In the, in the, in the codex, if you put Abaddon with a unit of Terminators, they're going to wreck face through almost anything they touch. But it's just not as stupidly ubiquitous and overpowered as it was, which I'm quite pleased about, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it I mean, was it, stupid. It was stupid it, in the it end. It was too much. It was. it was way too much. It's like um, the entire the entire Eldari at the moment, basically. They should, you know what they should do? With the Eldari, go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. Because the index oh. is ridiculous. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's re goddamn ridiculous. Well, their their army special rule, which is the fate dice, it's effectively mm -hmm. cheating with what official. <laughs> That's what it yeah. is. It effectively allows you to. The way it works is you roll a certain number of dice at the beginning of the game, and throughout the game, you can change certain dice rolls for those rolls. Mm. So it's cheating. It's effectively cheating, but in the game. <laughs> officially mandated it's bonkers it is absolutely it is. insane that rule here's a question for you what purpose do the Eldari have in 40k right now I uh, have sex with um 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 Dilly Bute Man. yeah yeah because ah, yeah yeah they're, right. they're Rubite's girlfriend aren't they that's, that's what they do yeah. now <laughs> yeah, the entire race is Rubite's girlfriend that's what they do now yeah. um, he's trying to repopulate their species <laughs> they had this entire, um, you know, the uh, Yanari um, element. You've got the Drakari, mm -hmm. which have a, a place and they have a yep. purpose and everything. Um, but right now, the Eldari don't seem to have any kind of real anything. They, just, they haven't had just the narrative there. push, have they? Since since the no. whole Inari thing, mm -hmm. they haven't really mm -hmm. had the narrative push that some of the other factions have had and some of the other units have had and that's a shame mm. they could do with it they could do with it there's a lot i mean there's a lot of potential with the eldari because yeah, the guys the only... race. back burner sorry xenos race put them on the back burner oh yeah of course of you know course. Again, it's I mean, you know it happens yeah it's true i mean hopefully i mean they will get a narrative push because all of the the armies that have been released thus far sure. that have had their their narrative yeah. push so yeah. let's see what they do with them. I mean, one of the things mm. they are going to do, and they'll definitely do, is tone them down. Because they yeah. need it. <laughs> they need it. It's insane at the moment. Desperately so. Desperately so. <laughs> There's just certain um, combinations in the army list that are with the, the, the overall army rule that are bonkers. <laughs> like, absolutely pants-on-head ridiculous <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> No, see, that's what we should do with the Eldari. Just now get the model where the pants on the head. <laughs> it would be a very visually interesting look. Yeah, that's right, Daffith. Uh, plastic warp spiders. Yeah. That, mm, that'll yeah. happen. That has got to happen. There is no way the 10th Ed Eldari Codex can release with those old metal. Are they Mike McVeigh sculpts? They are. I think they are, aren't they? They are. There's no way. They can yes, release those sculpts. There is no yes. way. It would be. I'm, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you right now. There'll be no new warp spiders with the uh, tenth head. <laughs> is that the prediction? <laughs> That's my prediction. It won't happen. Oh, do, you think, do you think I, a cool I, thing I is if we did well something enough. like a an aspect warrior battle force set? So there's like new striking scorpions, new warp spiders, mm. new dragon lords, oh. and then what, whatever the other. Like an Eldar thing, so and you just put it in what you know how you have like the preview boxes for like um, yeah, yeah. previously for um, sisters. You do something like yeah. that. That could be quite cool because you don't need to do the warriors because uh, they've been done reasonably recently. Mm. It's just yeah. uh, I think you said before it's just the aspect warriors mostly that haven't mm. had a, a, a redo for a long, the long time. Redos they need the warp spiders and a couple of the phoenix lords haven't been done for a long time. They could do with updating. So like and the striking scorpions need to be released in a box yes. Yes. isn't yeah, absolutely yeah yeah a box where you can actually army build them rather than a game box yeah a yeah. kill team box yeah mm. that's it that's it. and also i mean they need they need to do a phoenix lord for the warp spiders right because mm. there has to be one there has to be a founder of the temple that, you just know make what? it look like there you go that'd be fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah although that's slightly more drukhari isn't it that true kind of true yeah you say you make a like Yvrain kind of thing, you know? 
and you cover up the baps, obviously. You don't want to flopping around like uh, she did in, in Dark Souls, but... <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't really work, God. does it? Not in know. No, I mean, it would again for the Drakari, but, you know... The Drakari, fine, yeah, absolutely, it works. But not, not that they're a bit more dignified, aren't they? Yeah, the old, a little bit, the yeah. Drakari. Well, yeah, it's not the 80s anymore. They can't just have the Baps uh, just bobbing around like they used to. Uh, Unless of the weird uh, tongue uh, horse things for Slanesh. Those can have boobs on them. Yeah, oh, they do, and they do. They're allowed. <laughs> the yeah. Sculpts actually do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Seekers, yeah. That's what they're called, yeah, Seekers, that's what yeah. they're called. Love them. Love them. Although, again, demonettes, guys, come on, update them. Yeah. Please mm. update them. I'd be happy if they just went back to an older sculpt. Um, Me too. The, uh, mm. the one DS sculpts. Yes. Because they are the Crab Claws they... ones. Or the ones no, after the, them. No, the, the, those, I think those are Mike McVeigh sculpts, actually, the Crab Claw ones. It's the ones that came about around the 3.5 Chaos Space Marine Codex, so early 2000s. And they are really slender, and they're actually quite beautiful for demons. And rather than crab claws, they're like these chitinous spikes. Mm -hmm. And they're really diaphanous and elegant and really beautiful, you know? Um, the, the, I, would, I would like something more redolent of them. And uh, Andy, David says that the uh, Kill Team Striking Scorpions has been released separately. Oh, I didn't know it already. I did not mm. know either, to be honest. No, I'd, I'd miss that one. Not the first clue. Um, as for myself, I have been working through Skaven Tide whilst listening to Skaven Tide. Wow. How, how <laughs> is Skaven, Skaven Tide the, uh, the, the book then, audiobook? Really good. Yeah. Does it pick up really better good. well from uh, where AOS kind of left off before, which wasn't anywhere, granted? It almost feels like a soft reboot. Mm -hmm. Well, since nothing happened in the last yeah, edition, yeah. I guess that makes that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the um, core rulebook has that feeling, doesn't it, Adam? It, it does, does feel like really they've been set a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Just subtly, that rule you know. Is gorgeous. Oh, it's so good, honestly. It's so good. I mean, I'm still wrapping my head around it. I'm, I'm not. I, mm -hmm. I still don't because it's so intricate, isn't it? It's so yeah. like subtly intricate. You, you've got to wrap your head around certain, certain like felicities of the rules now oh so i can do stuff in my opponent's turn mm -hmm. i've got to think about like when they move i can do things i can't you've go activated my it. trap card yugi is like that yeah he's kind of like that oh i can do this stratagem and i can fire at your unit now or i can reposition this unit now it's really reactive and mm -hmm. in a way that none of the other games have been before is there an army that specifically does that more than others? No, well, right they now, do. they all do yeah, it. Right, uh, right now, it's a bit of a weird one because they've all got the gets you by rule cards, yeah. which um, they will be subserved very, very quickly. I think once mm -hmm. the, the books start coming out, which is much like um, ten, ten, forty k, it seems to be taking a while to get to the actual first two rule books, which I'm assuming will be announced on. Saturday, no, hang on. Whatever yeah, now, Friday, to uh, it's Wednesday. Because it is later than usual, isn't it? Given the it is, release. it is. They normally have two to go, don't they? Two ready mm -hmm. to go, and it's going to be Stormcast and Skaven, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're, is, the, yeah, yeah. they're going to be the the obvious ones to do. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Skaven army looks like because mm -hmm. right now the Skaven are they're doing something really weird, really interesting. Desolating the Stormcast by the looks of things, for one. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're going to get to hell then. Even close. It's not even close, is it? It's like, no. it's so one-sided. Yeah, we'll, we'll be getting to the hell end stuff later on. Holy uh, mother of Christ. Like, right. that's... It's a massacre. Uh, it's a total massacre. Sigmar, pull your fucking finger out. The Great Horned Rat is showing you up. Last I looked, it was 67% versus 33%. <laughs> the, the Stormcast are getting their shit pushed in. It is yeah, really, are. really bad. It's like, oh my God. What happened to them? You know? Uh, I think it's the uh, the current Skaven army is just insanely good. It's good, um, right? So the, there's a couple of things that happened with the Skaven army, which is really cool. Overwhelming is the word I would use. Uh -huh. Yeah. Whilst you have the um, the war machines and everything that, that do all of their bits and bobs, the main force of the Skaven is just a push. Yeah, that's how you play it. It's a push. Yeah. You don't 
do what you used to do, which is try to mob people and bring them down. You just keep pushing. And it's brilliant. It's really, really good. It's a, the Skaven right now stand in this place where whilst all the clans and everything are all going to be still named, mm -hmm. everything feels very condensed and together. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to guess, and this may seem like a weird thing, I'm going to guess that when this book comes out, you won't get Plague Monks anymore. Mm -hmm. You're going to get something else, something that isn't just a Plague Monk. It's going to be some kind of biomechanical horror. Yeah, it looks that, that way. Because that's, yeah. like, that's the ethos of the army now, isn't it? That's the way they're, they're yeah. sort of edging now. Yeah, they've moved into being a, a proper force of entropy, and it is mm -hmm. beautiful. I, I love it. The um, the book Skaven Tide it talks about how when the Skaven arrive, there's this like um, miasma that comes with them, mm -hmm. and it slowly just decays and kills everything around it. it turns it onto just like this horrible, barren, weed filled area, mm -hmm. and that happens everywhere they go as they break through it's really cool it's and interesting then, uh, isn't it because that's where they're coming into conflict with the followers of nurgle which they are sometimes allies with but mm -hmm. with nurgle it's entropy decay and then rebirth it's the cycle yes. right yeah. but with the the skaven it's not it is one way it is it is decay entropy and rot and then death yeah. nothing yeah right so they, they sometimes come into religious conflict with, with the followers of nurgle on that basis it's one of the reasons i think that the plague monks will probably vanish because the mm. the molderish part of it that could also be nurgle yeah that's always been a bit of a weird thing and it does look like they're going to move more into just skiri and molder creating mm. horrible mishmash of things and sticking yeah. them together well yeah, that, that um, does I'm, make sense like you say aesthetically alone like it, it's hard to design when you've got two sets of miniatures that are broadly similar aesthetically mm -hmm. It's hard to do that, isn't it? And then make them distinct, you know? Well, the, the clan rats from this box set, there are elements of plague monks in them. There's mm -hmm. elements of the old uh, Mordheim era, yeah. uh, Skaven, that it's all in there and it's all condensed into one unit. So these mm. aesthetics, you know, like the um, the spikes and things from the uh, the Mulder, uh, not Mulder, the Pestilence. Um, Pestilence, yeah. Yeah, um, Plague monks and stuff, they are in there in the clan rats. They're built into the clan rats. Mm. So that all of that stuff is still there. It just doesn't have that. But this could also be Nurgle feel. Yeah. Which is it's, really, really smart. It's condensed it down. It's made them more defined, hasn't it? It's made them more, which is what AOS does a lot, actually, with its armies. It's made them much mm -hmm. more defined and much, given them much more identity than they had before. Apparently, the current total is 37.6 to the Stormcast to 62.4 to the Skaven. That's brutal, Ooh. isn't it? That's it is. really brutal, that is. Jesus. They are taking a beating. And of course, Hellfriend is going to be part of the um, the overall story. Yeah, so it's going to determine how things come out, isn't it, apparently? Mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of cool. I like that. I like the idea of the Stormcast actually being on the, the back foot again. I kind of like that. In the Skaven Tide book, the um, the, the Grey Seers are um, not killing Stormcast. They're taking their hearts and taking their eyes and things like that. <laughs> no, not killing them. No, leaving them alive, obviously. Yeah, leave them alive with the weird Skaven sorcery. Mm -hmm. The what's really cool is the the feel of the Skavens changed in that book. You know, there there isn't that um, comedy factor that's yeah. always been there with the Skaven. Whilst you know, it, it kind of is still there in a bleak, black kind of way. Uh -huh. But these are, the Skaven are scary. They are fucking scary. Well, they've become a full-fledged chaos force now, haven't yeah. they? I mean, like, he is now officially, the Horned Rat is officially the fifth chaos power, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. He's an, he's an ascendant. Yep. Are you saying cool. what they need to turn this around is Gotrek needs to appear again? <laughs> I've got a feeling I know where this might go. And I know what everyone's going to say. It's wishful thinking, Adam. <laughs> but fuck me sideways. Is Hashut not all the way through this fucking rule book? Yeah, he actually... Th th they, <laughs> th th that book has a section, a tiny little bit, where it basically says the Chaos Dwarves are coming. Yeah. It more or less just says, Chaos Dwarves are coming this edition. So, yeah. They're but, ringing under the mountains and yeah. the forges. Yeah. 
that have nothing to do with Skaven. Yeah, no. I, it's come on. It's like so, the image of like a bearded forge icon in yeah. the in the book, and it's like, oh, come on. You know. Is this where the really depressing thing is? Uh, we get like a re envisioning of the fire slayers. It's like, oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll kill um, someone, Andy. I, I will come <laughs> and I will throttle someone. I will watch the light leave their eyes. That's what I'll do. I wonder That's what, what I'll do. Be funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> Something I really want. Oh, it's, it's just fire slayers again. Yeah. God damn it. They are so going to be in it, though. But what are they going to be? Because like they will AOS them to the nth yeah. degree obviously so they won't just be like chaos dwarfs anymore no, obviously no. there'll be something different will they I'm be slavery they again that's what i want to know mm. will they enslave the orcs again oh the goblins like they used to <laughs> uh, yeah no one no they, they had like uh what yeah, was, was it hobgoblins goblins? Oh, yeah, yeah. Goblins, yeah, yeah they used to they used to enslave like the orcoid species effectively because yeah. there weren't well, many of them they had the fucking hobgoblins with the cruel boys they did the mm -hmm. whole goblins are there, and they're great. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Mm. No reason why not, you know. It should. I mean, I wonder if they're going to bring back some of the classic characters. You know, I mean, like, uh, what, who's the guy Astrogoth. on the Astrogoth? That's right, the guy who's half turning to stone. Yep. On his big well, baby walker. Well, what I think would be um, a really cool thing would just be having a unit of nothing but Astrogoths. That would be good, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Just big steam piston powered stone people just running at the enemy. What if Astrogoth has fully turned to stone and he's like the giant stone head in Zardos? I think that's then a great I'm happy. idea. Then I think that's a great happy. idea. Or if he's like installed in like the chaos equivalent of a mech, a demon engine, that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Get in the fucking axe. <laughs> that's what they, I mean, I think that's probably where they'll go. There'll be demon yeah. engines in the mm. Chaos Dwarf army list because that's what they make, right? That's yeah. the last time we kind of officially saw the Chaos Dwarfs was when they released. Do you remember when they released the Hell Cannon? I Back do. in I do. Uh, before yeah. the end times, and that came with yeah, the of... penis and testicle cannon. Yeah, basically. Yep. And it had like little <laughs> Chaos Dwarf attendants. Yep. That's, the Legions that... of Asgore. Yep. Yeah. That was a while back. <laughs> I mean, there have been Chaos Dwarves in, um, you know, the little Chaos culty uh, sets that you've got. Yeah, that's right, yeah, uh, Warcry stuff. Kind of, yeah, mm -hmm. the Warcry stuff. But they've kind of been incidental, and they've almost gone away now, so... Yeah, no, well, pretty much have at this point, which is a massive shame. Yeah. yeah nah. So my, my feeling is it's going to be um, a slant down fight between Hashut and the Horned Rat. That would be interesting. Oh, for, for a place in the, yep. the Chaos Pantheon, yeah? Yep. Just... Cool. Um, Archeon says in one of the books that he's allowed this to happen. Um, he's allowed <laughs> the Horned Rat to rise in order to destabilize the other Chaos Gods. That if there can only be five, then, who would you prefer to be in there? Would you prefer Hashut or the Horned Rat? doesn't say there only has to be five. Yeah, but you'd think it would be funny if the Horned Rat got kicked out again. <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious. That fifth place is just rotating, basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's... Um, it would be a really good way of separating AOS from 40k. 40k yeah. has the four chaos powers. Uh -huh. AOS can have a multitude, a you know, varying degrees of smaller gods. Yeah, it's true. And it would be yeah, to me that'd be a really good idea. Yeah, I like the idea. I love the idea of like uh, this. Oh, now which god? There was mention of one of the old gods from Warhammer in the book as well, and I can't remember which one it was now, but some. Some spark of one of the older gods from Warhammer mm. has turned up again as well. Yep. So Milan, the god of the sea, is kicking around with the Ideneth. He's hanging around mm. like a um, spookums down by the Ideneth. And mm -hmm. Moor apparently is striding around a bit. Yeah, no, that's even by Nagash. Yeah, because Moor technically should have been eaten by Nagash, but maybe there is a yes. spark of him around, you know. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, Moor was eaten by Nagash, but there is something. It's like Morathon or something like that. It's mm. they call it. Interesting. It's like, Interesting. what are you? I mean, like yeah. in the in the metaphysics of AOS, there are technically inf infinite, potentially infinite gods, mm -hmm. aren't there? I mean, like yeah. you know, mortals can be raised to the state of gods. I mean, look at Absolutely. Sigmar and and Morathai and Teclis and Tyrion and whatnot. What I really want is the uh, the White Wolf Ulrich to certainly yeah. smash through Sigmar's halls and just be like, what have you done? Ulrich would be great, wouldn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. he, can you imagine the mini for Ulrich? 
<laughs> just this, big, this giant thing. middle finger with a beard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he would be epic, wouldn't he? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'd be all right if they sculpted him to look like Sif. Just put a big old sword in his mouth. That's that's kind of what I was thinking of. To be yeah. like a big white wolf with a with a sword, yeah. and like mm. you know, wintry aspects around him. You know. No, mm -hmm. oh, I'm I am all up for that. That would, oh yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah. Oh well, looks like I'm starting a new army. Yeah. I mean, like, I wonder. What, you know what? We never got mention of what happened to Shalia. Um, she was devoured. Was she by who? Yeah. What what got her? By one of the chaos when, gods. So I mean, it'd be Nurgle, probably, wouldn't it? Because yeah. Shalia was like the enemy of Nurgle in yep. the old world. So she was like the, the goddess of healing and yep. of, of recuperation. So if memory serves me right, she was destroyed and devoured in the end times because that wow. way there was no coming back from the destruction of the of the world. You know, there was of course, yeah, because that's what she was, wasn't she? She was like rebirth and whatnot. Yep. So yeah. I mean, he I didn't do a good aspects. job because they no, all came didn't. back in AOS, but... <laughs> right, right. Well, um, Alariel took on a lot of her aspects. Of course ah. she did, yeah. Of course she did. So, As the goddess yeah. of life, yeah, obviously. Yeah. But it's not just life, it's um, it's life, it's rebirth, it's the, the mm. cycles of nature and all stuff like that. And of course, Grum Brindle's still kicking around. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Walking around awesome. selling his magazine. <laughs> As he does, yeah. Yeah. Made an epic uh, re-entry, didn't he, at the end of the broker of uh, the Broken Realms? Yes. <laughs> God, how long ago was that? You know, yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we get into some news, folks? Yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. What are we looking at? So first and foremost, we're going to talk about some speed freaks. I thought this was worth. Oh, up this just is the, because... uh, the video game, yeah? Yeah, it's come again with orcs. Yeah, um, uh, sounds good to me, to be yeah. honest. I mean, <laughs> Carmageddon's a really good basis for a sort of orcoid game. Yep, I mean, I'm all in for this, and the trailer looks really good. It looks um, fun, doesn't it? Yep, it goes on to early access uh, on the 6th of August. Oh, okay, so... let's see. The so publisher hopefully. hasn't done a huge amount of work. No. Done oh, a few right, bits, okay. but not a lot. No, but uh, hopefully this is something that they can get out, and it's um, it's half decent. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I don't let's think it's going to do it. desperately well. I think it'll be fine. It'll be a low tier kind of thing, but yeah, as long as it yeah. as long as it works on release. That's it. Right, you know, if it works, as hell, yeah. yeah, if it does that much, it'll be better than most AAA titles at the very least, yeah. though. Uh, at the moment, so yeah, <laughs> as long as it does better than Realms of Ruin, we'll be fine. Which one was what? It, Realms? Oh, Realms of the AOS title, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. We get that for two pounds, the ultimate edition from certain places. Two pounds, I might get that actually for two quid, just because I, I can be bothered. Even for two pounds, I looked it in when it, I don't think it looks nah. interesting enough. <laughs> No, reminded me too much exists. of all. Uh, it reminded me too much of Dawn of War three in a lot of aspects. Mm, yeah, I was like now nah, I'm all right. I'm good. That's, I don't need any of the games. I've got Sovel, and I will <laughs> happily play Sovel <laughs> until the day I die. Now, yeah, this will be. I'm interested to see how well this does. It's not something I'm going to be yeah. picking up. And I, I, you know, oh, out of this and Space Marine two. I think most people are maybe a little bit more interested in Space yeah, Marine too, yeah. yeah. Which had its uh, its build leaked, um, and most oh, people have played the full game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. At least a nearly completely finished version of the game. So oh, apparently, uh, there are ample story spoilers out there. So if you're inclined, Ooh. you know, be be careful. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah. Oh, I mean. Phew. Wow. It was a bit of a whoopsie. Someone fucked up. Someone probably yeah, got fired, probably. I would imagine. Yeah, I yeah. would think so. Yeah. I would think so. <laughs> Jesus. God no, almighty. A, but yeah, it's not bad. my you know, it's not my kind of game, but I hope it's good. You know, I yeah. hope it does well. I've always got a thing for like Carmageddon and um mm. uh, Vigilante Eight. Yeah, Twisted Metal. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's just something <laughs> about those kind of games I just quite enjoy. God. I mean, I remember loving Carmageddon when that came out. Mm. That was a load of fun. What was the WWE one called? Do you remember that one? It was on PlayStation Crum 2? Crumble no, Zone or something? Oh. Cra yeah, Crumble Zone, Crash Zone. It was, it was, that was crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah I can imagine it was. Awful. <laughs> I can imagine it was. Yeah, you didn't even get like just giant wrestlers hanging out of 
things it just looked it looked like when hot wheels releases a the masters of the universe line and it's just a car in the colors of he-man but it's yeah. <laughs> you know it's that bad eh? oh yeah really really bad this Ouch. is stone cold steve austin's car it it isn't though is it you know no. it's not a giant beer bottle <laughs> <laughs> this is Kane's car. No, no, it's not. Stop <laughs> it. Kane wouldn't fit in that. It's a big man. Um, next up, we've got some DK Books. Now, this is worth going into because this DK Books is the guys. Is the guys? That's terrible English. Are the guys <laughs> who do like the Ultimate Guide to Batman, the Ultimate Guide to Marvel. Yeah. yeah. The fact that there is going to be an Ultimate Guide to 40K means we've kind of turned a corner with this franchise. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is now a um, for it to be some form of tabletop, tabletop book, coffee table book, is what I was trying to say. That mm -hmm. um, we're now talking about Warhammer as being a, a a knowable name. Yeah, it's it's expanded, hasn't it? It's become much more commonplace. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, in the same it's way cool. that like, well, not to the, the scale of like Marvel or DC, but you know, no. you go back twenty years, fifteen years, and you know. People got excited when DK Books and people like that released the Ultimate Guide yeah. to Batman, Ultimate Guide to Spider-Man. Yeah, because these things are usually really well made and very, yeah. very in-depth. They're really good sort of um, entry points as well, aren't they, for new players yes. and whatnot, because mm. they explain so much. That that page gets me. The one with all the chaos stuff on it. Like, So you've got like, oh, look, here's the old miniature. Here's the new one. Here's the old miniature. Here's the new mm. one. Tarnesh bit. Look at the Slanesh bit. And it's like, here's the old Slanesh miniature, which is from Rogue Trader. And here's <laughs> the new one, which is not, which is from the Horus Heresy. It's not even a Slanesh miniature. It's like, ah! Oh dear. I yeah. want well, the people putting this book together when what the fuck do we do? They're like, no Slanesh yeah. miniatures. That, what do we that, do? What, that is exactly it, Andy. <laughs> I think that is exactly it. We haven't released any new Slanesh miniatures for like 10 years in 40 yeah. days. What do you mean they've know? got a picture of one? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? And it's, not, and it's from Horus Heresy. You know, it's not <laughs> even from, it's not even Slanesh. You know, let's paint it up like a Slanesh miniature and call it a new one. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I still like the, I still like those. All. I really like that corn berserker, the old one. Oh, the yeah. old one, the yeah, that is it. cool. That oh. is one of the original corn berserker miniatures. That is the, the, was the, that before uh, the plastic kit? I think it yeah. was right. This yeah, was yeah, it, yeah. it, it, it was that's they basically metal. look the same, but they were just slightly that's, different, right? It, that is a really it's a really unusual miniature. It came out in the interim between Rogue Trader and and Second Ed. That did. Mm. It was lead originally. That was the Thousand Sun is the same, and the Plague Marine. Oh, so they're the ones who you, you you know you give to young kid to suck on for a while. Yeah, yeah. If you want them to be quiet permanently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are your children too noisy? Tell them to suck on a nurgling. Just have some lead. <laughs> what could go wrong? It's all good. Uh, yeah, Daffod uh... is right though. Daffod says those four um, OG Traitor Legion minis did so much work to establish the aesthetics. We love oh, so yeah. much. It's true. Oh yeah. It's. I mean, look. I mean, look at the the Rubrique, You know. I mean, it, it is. They're, they're not much different. You know. The 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 basics are still there. Yeah. yeah. Just the proportions uh, and the amount of yeah. pieces really that's been changed. That's it. Otherwise, the play Marines yeah. are pretty much bang on. You know. There's very that that miniature has been like recreated. Yeah, in the new set, you know. So the only thing with the the plague marine is there's le there's less greebles. That's it. Yes, that's just a bit more yeah, basic. Yeah. That's it. It's like yeah, yeah. We can't comment on the Slanesh one because who knows? No, because <laughs> there's, that's not even a noise marine, you know. No, that that, that old miniature. It's not even a noise marine. It's just a, an old Slanesh Chaos Space Marine from Rogue Trader. Uh, Adam, does it mention in the story like how many pages this is meant to be? Because there's clearly a lot to go through for 40k is it just yeah. going to be like 200 pages because you probably no. get about 200 pages per law for rule yeah, books no it'll be bigger than that 334 page okay wow. that's, that's, that's probably that's about pretty... what i think that's yeah. what you should expect for the amount that it's you need hefty, to go through it's maybe a little bit more than you'd get law wise in a than from a rule book like a core rule yeah. book i mean yeah yeah a little it's bit more not a lot i wouldn't mind you know, I, I wouldn't mind picking this up myself, actually. I'm probably going to grab it, if nothing yeah, else. This would be good for your kid. If, you, yeah. if you've got sons or daughters who are, like, uh, young and kind of interested in getting it, this would be perfect for them. Yeah. Oh, well, so perfect. It gives you such a good grounding, right? And also, it's the kind of thing where you can flick through and see which ones you really... The, the ones that sing to you, yeah? Yeah. 
Have you noticed who's working on it? Gav Thorpe uh, Gav and Thorpe someone. And, um, Guy Haley. Andy Chambers, That's it. Was it. Guy Haley, yeah. Guy Haley, yeah. right. Which is a, a fairly decent amount of um, of history between the two of them. It is, isn't it, really? I mean, they've been in the industry for a long time. Gav is, is God, he's been in the industry for years hasn't he since he was it a looks, kid, really. yeah. if, I, if i was going to throw on a little bit of a ah oh, that's a shame it looks like it's just miniatures in the yeah. magazine rather than like any classic bits of artwork or theme setting artwork pieces which are usually yeah. pretty important i feel for mm -hmm. yeah. getting the vibe of the universe Definitely. that's why they were yeah. always really appreciated in the codexes i understand why they're not in here though but i think that's if if it was if I was going to throw a critique for like five pages yeah. that we get to see here, that would that would be the only thing I'd throw out. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, that would it be doesn't, nice. It doesn't say either way whether it does or doesn't. I would imagine with the amount that they have to cover, probably yeah. not, because there's a lot they got to get through with every imagine, army. Yeah, you know, to be fair to them, I imagine they're just not going to have the space. Are they not yeah. making the book like another hundred pages? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why you get volume two. <laughs> the art of Warhammer, yeah. which yeah. I'd be all right with. We could do with another one of them. Absolutely, yeah, I'm up yeah. for that. Art books, I'm I'm in. You know, I'll always I'm a sucker for a good art book. Yeah, me too. Moving on, then, should we get onto some Witter Workshop? Yeah, yeah, Abby Dabby Doo Da Don. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he's yeah, a big enemy. Wow, <sighs> fucking Jesus! He like. looks amazing, doesn't he? Three foot high, three yeah. foot high. Abaddon the Despoiler. That's incredible, isn't it? I mean, he looks great. Nobody is ever going to get it, but it is no. incredible. <laughs> I'm just pissed off that they're working on Scragroth the Loon King in the background. Yeah! I mean, what the hell? That's great! That If I won the lottery, I would want a Scragroth yeah. to use as a garden gnome. Mm-hmm. That was oh, believe me, if I cats. had the money, I'd be getting that Abaddon. I mean, that that is it is incredible. Well, looking, you know, it? you could always take part in the um, uh, payment plan. Yeah, yeah. Fuck's sake! Like... Take out a mortgage to get the damn thing. Uh, I'm trying to think how much. How much is it? I, I did see how much it was, but I can't remember. Uh, One thousand eight hundred and ninety nine dollars. I was gonna say knocking two grand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to work that mm. out in British pounds, um, just because that involves work. But I mean, but bloody hell, right? It's it's nice. It's one of those things where I'm I, I'm glad it exists. Yeah, I will never see one ever in the wild, um, unless I go to. Yeah, Amazon. you might you might see one um, in like a Games Workshop somewhere. They yeah. might have one on display or at a convention. Warhammer World, maybe. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that's a good shout. Actually. Mm. Try to get back down to Warhammer World at some point, and there might be one in there. Probably not at James's I house or something, I would imagine. <laughs> no, I, Unless I James goes all in. I, I firmly believe there'll be one in your house, Andy. Uh, no. <laughs> Unless someone buys one for me. <laughs> yeah, you, you haven't bought it. <laughs> it Nobody knows it. where it came from. Nobody comes forward, but you have it. I feel all right. I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> you keep looking at it going, but I don't like Abaddon that much. He's fine. <laughs> yeah. He's all right. You know, I think there should be a variant. There should be a variant of the second edition version of this. Oh, cute. <laughs> cute, yeah. Well, very very small squatter, and he has one pose. Yeah. Same pose and everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, it was the same pose as the original miniature. Not That's this what I mean, pose. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. God. So the problem cute. is, every time you look at it, both arms just fall to the ground. Yeah, just fall <laughs> off, as they always did on the original Abaddon. I owned mm. that mini like six times when I was a kid. Did you? <laughs> yeah, because bits kept falling off and getting lost. Oh no! Uh, yeah. yeah, I really like the face sculpt uh, the uh, they've done on on this version mm. of the character. It's, um, yeah, uh, maybe the best rendition we've seen of Abaddon. Granted, this is like you compare it to a small miniature that GW have yeah. yeah. done. You compare it to an old miniature GW have done. You compare it to the Jada Toys version, and then artwork, and that's mm -hmm. about it. So there's not a huge amount of options, but I think this. Uh, from the artwork, this looks like the closest to that that I've seen. It is very good. It's very good. I love what they've done with like the aesthetic of Abaddon recently as well. They've they've, they've dirted him up a bit. Yeah. They've made him more feral looking and a bit more like Horus, you know, like Horus did, which I kind of like. It's still different, which is that's, that, that's obviously yeah. that's hard to do, but obviously quite yeah. important. Make them they're noticeably gonna... like, oh yeah, they look the same, but they are like father yeah. and son. 
Yes, exactly that. It works. Because, of course, I mean, there's that whole rumor that Abaddon was a clone of Horus once yeah. upon a time. That's been knocking about for ages, that has. So. Yeah. My favorite thing about him is his belt. And his it's belt. a really weird thing. But if you look at his belt, the skulls he has in his belt are pure mm -hmm. Wayne England. They've got the Wayne Excellent. England style of skull. And I, I don't know why, but that just makes me really happy. Yeah, Daffith's got it. A bit more swollen with power, but more in control than Horus was. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. That's it. You know, he's he essentially still mortal. He's still in control of his faculties. He hasn't let chaos saturate him. Yeah, Horace was like uh, your dad on Christmas who ate too much chicken and he needs to sit on the sofa and kind of go to sleep into a food coma. <laughs> <laughs> Abaddon kind of paces uh, his meal out a little bit better. Yeah. Well, Abaddon knows when to stop eating the, uh, yeah. the metaphorical <laughs> Christmas dinner, yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, when the Slanesh comes in, would you like some more pigs in blanket? Oh, I'm all right. <laughs> no, no he doesn't. Abaddon goes to the fridge, makes a sandwich, and then promises to everybody that he didn't. He just opened the fridge to have a look at what was inside. <laughs> That's, and he keeps doing it constantly. And people are like, look, you've done this 13 times now. I haven't. Well, he's haven't. clever. He paces himself. He's clever about it, you know? I love what they've done with the, the talent of Horus, where it looks like it works. Like, it mm. looks functional, you know? I think that's mm. utterly brilliant. I mean, it, it is really, really nice. Yeah, there's no, there's no two words about it. It's uh, well, they do some pretty good stuff. You know, they've been known for a couple of years of doing fine yeah, work. Not, you know, not too bad work. Lord yeah. of the what? Lord of the what? Lord Never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Never heard of it. <laughs> um, I, you, you all noticed by the way, I haven't put in anything about the financials or the fact that people are now losing their minds because there's only five months now for. Cavill gives workshop on Amazon to hammer out a Bible. It's. Not I mean, I think story. that's probably going to fall through. If it, if they've yeah. only got five months to do something, it's like, ah, probably not going to work. Yeah, but we don't it? know yeah. what they've already done. Uh, that's true. true. That's true. Yeah, no, nobody's ever said they've only got five months left and they've done this much. No. It's always just been there's only five months left on the contract. Yeah, and the, yeah, it's not a story. What I've done? Not yet. Is, yeah, not, yeah, not yet. Yeah. In in five months' time, it'll be a story. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So what I've done here is I have broken down the rule sets into two things. The rule sets, the uh, the new stories into two things: into 40k Munda Kill Team and AOS Old World Warcry and Underworlds. So let's start off with things from the 40k universe with okay, the cool. Mild Strain, because I don't think we've had a chance yet to really get into the Mild Strain. Oh yeah, they're very cool, aren't they? They, I do. I do love them. A bit a bit of you know body horror in 40k. Love it. Mm -hmm. I um I scary, uh, scary, uh, scary little bastards, aren't they? Oh, they really are. And the fact that there's like ticks that they've added to the uh well, whatever the hive mind they've got is now. What uh, you know, I, I just love the fact that they're controlled by like a Mechanicum guy. And do you know that Mechanicum guy? Do you know what his first appearance was? No. Space Crusade. Was it? No way. Yeah. I had not so, the first clue. Mm -hmm. So you got mentioned in Space Crusade. He's mentioned again in one of the uh, Space Hulk um, uh, missions that was print, uh, printed in White Dwarf, where oh. he's trying to steal Gene Stealer stuff. Yeah, he is absolutely a part of Games Workshop's history. It's really oh. cool. That is brilliant. I thought he was a new character. That is fantastic. Nope. Hermitus is a uh, an old guy who originally turned up in White Dwarf 145. Fantastic. That's that's just wonderful. I love that. Mm -hmm. What's cool, of course, is that uh, the actual guy, Hermitus, is dead. He is long dead. Yeah. But the Malstrain still have his genetic uh, material, so they, so they, they just reborn him every now and again. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, they are nasty looking things, aren't they? Yeah. Like what happens when Tyranids are exposed to radiation and disease and mm -hmm. you know, all the nasty stuff the Imperium dumps on itself. The, there's two things I love about the Malstrain. One is that if the uh, the hive mind actually got hold of them, they would just burn them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they wouldn't want to reabsorb anything. It would just be destroy, kill. You are not there. Yeah, you you deserve burning. Yeah, um, they, I mean, it wouldn't be good for the hive mind to reabsorb these guys, would it? No, 
No. I can't imagine they carry any useful genetic material. <laughs> And the uh, the fact that there are other gene sealer cults on Necromunda, and if they mm. come anywhere near the um, the mal strain, they just go on the attack because it's like <laughs> you are so far removed from the gene stealer cult that even yeah. the gene stealer cultists are scared of you. Yeah. So does that, that mean wow. technically it's almost better? It, a, a, a scenario would be if the mal strain conquered the entire planet because they would destroy most of the biomatter. That the Tyranids wouldn't use it. Yes. Mm, yeah, so technically, in cool. some ways, depending on how the war was going, the mile strain could be a better solution. Yeah. Yeah. Because the um, they would they'd end up starving. They'd is it turn up on the planet and just go, "Well, shit." Yeah. This is what we call a Crippman ta- t- tactic. Yeah. Is that <laughs> exactly bomb it? That, yeah. I can imagine. I mean, Crip, is Crip, Crippman's not still alive, is he? No, he's, he's long dead now. Like I could imagine him looking at these and going, "Hmm." You know, I can use them. Chin. Hmm. Yeah. But yes. what Hermitus was trying to do was trying to find a way to stop Gene Steeler cults being able to call Tyranids. Yeah. And in a weird roundabout way, he succeeded. Kind of succeeded. Because the I don't know wave... why they remind me of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, but I don't know why. I think it because it looks like they're almost planty. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> they they are they do have a planty quality, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a Eesh. coral reef or something, isn't it? It's almost fungal, isn't it? That's yeah. what they look like to me. Like they've got some sort of like irradiated fungus growing out of them, which is bleh. Oh, they are Love just them. nasty. They're scary, tall. scary, scary looking miniatures, which I like. I'm very mm-hmm. pleased with that. Yeah, I'm, uh, once these guys get released by themselves, I'll be going all in on them. Yeah, yeah. They'll come out with the spindle drones. <laughs> <laughs> We all know my plans for the spindle drones. <laughs> 400 spindle drones. That's an army. <laughs> and of course, the um, the new spire hunters have appeared as well to, uh, mm-hmm. to combat the gene stealer cults. And compared to the Malwave, I'm not a fan of these guys. Let's have a look There's something that's just not very 40k about them, or, or exactly. Warhammer. Exactly. And I don't know what it is. It looks look, like something from War Machine. Is that what it's they, called, War Machine? Yeah, yeah, I can see War Machine. I think they look oh, more like... another um, game system, yeah? Yeah. I think they look like they're from Infinity. I don't know what that is. Is that Marvel? No, no, it's uh, another um, uh, sci-fi skirmish ah, okay. thing. Um, as werewolves. Um, <laughs> but it, they don't look 40k to me. Or at least... They don't look human 40k. They look like a mix of Eldar and Necron. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work as far as I'm concerned. I, I mean, I'm not saying these are bad sculpts. The sculpts themselves, you know, a lot of work's gone into them and they do look good. But as a design mm-hmm. aesthetic, they, they just don't work for me at all. They look maybe a little too advanced to be from a, an Imperial world. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, is that the thing? Yeah they, they, yeah, they don't look like. I think the problem that they're in and of themselves, I think they're actually really good. I think they're actually really interesting and they're, yeah. they're very, very beautiful, but there's no, there doesn't seem to be much correlation in their technology with what we know of Imperial technology or human technology in this universe. No, no. Even Which is stuff, odd, isn't it? Even stuff that's like from the dark age of technology, that whenever something like that turns up, it doesn't look like this. Yeah. So it's got like a, a cyberpunky feeling, doesn't it, when it turns up the stuff it, in the dark age of technology, you know? Yes, yeah. And th- this is so so rounded. It it lacks mm. the you know, the the hard edges of an imperial yeah. design. I think it, you're right. It, it's too redolent of some of the stuff the alien races do yeah. in forty K. It's a, yeah, it's odd, unusual. Yeah, it is it's a I mean I like them. I actually like mm-hmm. them in and of themselves. I think they're actually really interesting. And I particularly like the guy with the big spindly talons. I think that's quite fun. Oh yeah, yeah. I like the uh, the Jackara. It looks like he's doing the um the good old dance pose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean if you compare them to like the old Oris and the um mm-hmm. the, the spire suits, they they just don't look anything like them. Um mm-hmm. it's it's just a it's one of those weird things where yeah. Oh, it's actually further down the page. It's got some pictures of the old ones, and yeah, I remember those from I mean, yonks ago. They also look weird, but they look weird in the way that nineties forty k was weird. But all in all, oh, they're yeah. actually right. Okay, they're actually supposed to be derived from Xenos tech. Fair enough. Oh, okay, okay, I missed that bit. 
Well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we move on to Not a Space Hulk Part 1? Not a Space Hulk. Mm-hmm. Boarding actions. Boarding actions. So uh, boarding a actions boring cover. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is a really boring cover. Good Lord. Yeah, so Boarding Actions is back with 10th Ed with a lot of um, all sorts of stuff and some rules where you're basically playing Space Hulk. It's But oh, not. Wow. Yeah, it, you, it's freaking Space but Hulk, but it of. isn't. Is, is this basically to be like, we're not doing a Space Hulk uh, new edition for a while, so you can have this? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I very much feel that's the case. It, yeah, so I don't like that. <laughs> they've just like incorporated Space Hulk into the the main game, right? Yeah, pretty much. I oh. mean, it's it's all the stuff from Arcs of Omen that's been yeah. um, updated, which was good Ed. actually towards oh, yeah. the end of Ninth. There, that was loads of fun. I've got to say, mm-hmm. I loved those rules. Oh yeah, yeah, and it, it's a completely different game. It, it's a really, really good game to play. Um, yeah, the, I guess the positive spin is they're doing more with boarding actions rather than the negative approach, which is they're just kind of half-assing Space Hulk. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you like your, your glasses of water, full or empty, I suppose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally all over this. And the fact that it's a separate thing as well means they can do more with it, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's not a small book. You know? No, I'll be picking this up. As, a, as, a, as an alternative way of playing Tent Then, I'll definitely be picking this up. I wish I had a better cover. The cover reminds yeah. me more of a how-to book. You know how they were yes. like, uh, how you make Some... the minis, how you did that. That's yeah. what they remind me of from the 90s. versus work would be nice, wouldn't it? You, know. you could do anything, and it yeah. feels like they kind of just cheaped out on it a bit for a front cover. Just, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Well, uh, I think that this was a, um, well, we've got all this stuff. Let's get it out. Yeah, Let's, kind of a yeah. quick project kind of deal. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm. I could uh, see that. But I'm really happy that the Gene Steelers get a load of stuff to do in it. So, uh, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, this is almost tailor made for them, isn't it? There's a, a, Gene, a Gene Spawn onslaught, that's what it's called. So, basically, you have your human side, your Space Marines or your mm-hmm. Imperial Guard or whatever, um, and you have your certain points value that you're playing with, whilst the Gene Steeler cult has no points, no points value. It's oh. just wave after just wave, wave after yeah. wave. That's Space Hulk. Uh. That is Space Hulk. Yes. Right? That is Space Hulk. Yes. That's some Mordheim missions, too. Ah, that's great. I hate those missions. <laughs> yeah. Boarding patrols awesome. are typically 500 points. So you've got, like, you know, Terminators are the biggest you can get. Um, no knights, no vehicles, no monsters. You know, it's... It, mm-hmm. But then Gene Steel cults are like, you just, just keep throwing wave after wave. Do what you like, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Terminators are going to rock in this. Oh, God, yeah. It's all kind of made for it. I mean, literally, Terminator armor was made for this, wasn't it? It was actually made for this yes. function. Ah. <laughs> uh... <laughs> awesome. No, that looks fun. That does look fun. Yeah. And then, of course, um, we have uh, Not Space Hulk Part 2. Mm-hmm, which is mm-hmm. a game called Tyranid Attack, which is coming out only Tyranid in America. Tyranid Attack. I hate yeah. this. They shouldn't. They shouldn't have called it Tyranid Attack. No, because Tyranid Attack was the was um, a yeah the game. Yeah, it was the uh, Advanced Space Crusade after game. Mm. So, once, it, once, it was a very bright and very unique uh, yeah, looking Tyranid board game board. as well. Beautiful. Beautiful. Board specifically. Yeah, beautiful game. That's what it was. Andy, it was a you could play game. with the sphincter. Yes. Yeah, you could. Yeah. No, yeah, because it was a load of Space Marines inside a uh, Tyranid hive ship. Uh, in the same way that Advanced Space Crusade was, uh, mm-hmm. going through and doing missions. This is not that. <laughs> not no. That, no, because, it's uh, really not, depressing. Not because what it is, is a single-player Space Hulk. Oh, dear. Where you uh, you play as one character. Ooh. I don't know why all these games remind me of... Uh, do you remember, like, travel editions of, like, Connect 4 and Monopoly, yeah, yeah. where it's really yes. small, and you're like, why am I playing this on a plane? Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh. what these remind me of as well, yeah. unfortunately. Like, I, I understand like... their purpose, and I, I, I'm sure they have value to the brand, yeah. but I just kind of look at them and go, yeah, but I'd, I'd like, I don't know, Hero Quest is some, like or a real thing. game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. proper game, right? Yeah. Let's see, yeah, that's fine, I guess. I don't know. Mm. T- it's just not Tyranid Attack. Don't call it Tyranid Attack. Yeah. <laughs> Save Tyranid Attack for when you actually re release Tyranid Attack or yeah. do something big yeah. called Tyranid Attack, right? 
Check yeah. out uh, Mini Ed's channel, uh, Mini Sode. Yeah, he did a Tyranid attack reasonably recently, I think, mm -hmm. for a video. Yep. And you, you looked at it, it's all oh, its glory. Oh, it's great. It's, yeah. oh, it's, it's a great game, really fun. Um, but the thing that really annoys me about this is, have you seen the miniatures you get? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your four Space Marines, all the Tyranids are counters. Oh, yeah, that yeah. sucks. That's well, bad. yeah. That's what they did with uh, the Crons, whatever yes. that was called. Uh, I can't remember what the, the, um, was, the Space but... Marine game. We, yeah, we the one miniature of Titus and then... Everybody else is. Yeah, it was Tyranids again. It was all like uh, Ripper Swarms yep. since they were all yeah. counters again. Again, I oh. understand, but it's really, really lame at the I same time. I'm so annoyed it's if it's exactly all, the same it? counters. Oh, that's a, are they? I don't know. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. That would be funny if it were. It is lame and dull and wrong. <laughs> oh, the, 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 the Blood Angel is called Raphael because, of course, he is. The of Ultramarine is. is called yeah. Maximus because, of course, he is. Because, of course, yeah. Yeah. No, the Blood Angel's called Raphael. The Ultramarine's called Leonardo. Maximus. Um, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> no. My name is Maximus Decimus Viridius. What's the, the Space Wolf? Is L Lucas, I think? Yeah. Lucas yeah. the Trickster. I don't know. It just says Lucas, I think, upside down. Yeah. I can't see what... I can't really tell what the Salamander is. I don't... Adorix? Adorix? Donatello. Yeah, that's his yeah. name. Donny. He's green. <laughs> Don, he does machines. Don, Donny the Sally. Yeah. Oh, there it is. I'm look. I'm looking at the bloody cards on the card picture. They're under the models' names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, give me the bleach to drink. Adrix. <laughs> and then Vaughn. Who's Vaughn? Is he an Iron Fist? Yeah, he is. He's uh, got a, a little... Um, uh, metal hand, yeah, he must be yeah, an Iron Fist. Iron hands, yeah, yeah. yeah so Iron Fist. Vaughan, famous Iron Fist. It looks like on his forehead, the way that they've painted it, it looks like he's got Gene Steeler lumps on his forehead. <laughs> That's actually... Oh, dearie me. I know. Oops. Oh, dear. <laughs> Was it the Lamenters that had a, uh, a Gene Steeler infestation <laughs> that started taking over the Space Marines? Probably would be, wouldn't it? Mm. It always is the fucking Lamenters, isn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> They've had everything else thrown out, then why not? Oh, man. What difference is a Gene Stealer cult infestation going to make? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It must be Tuesday. The Lamenters have got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, should we move on then to uh, yeah, Big T's had a hard few years? What? Oh, yes. <laughs> I've, I've, I mean... named, I've named all of these in ways that made me laugh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the Imperial Agents have got a new book coming out, and to yeah, uh, that's good. Mm, that was a bit of good. a shocker, to be honest. I don't think anyone expected this. No, because nobody expects the Imperial Inquisition. But yeah, Jesus I mean, Christ. this because it came out of nowhere, didn't it? It did. It did. Um, and there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. The detachment rules for the Empire yeah. Imperialist fleet that you see. That's mm -hmm. really interesting. Um, it is really cool, actually. I love it. I've, in the back of my head, I've always got this idea of like a um, an Inquisitor that goes around with a, a band of people just digging up Archaeotech. That's all that he wants to do mm -hmm. is dig up Archaeotech and then he either gives it away to somebody for favours or you know, he builds up a... Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> A repository of, of archaeotech. He doesn't want alien stuff, it's just all human archaeotech. Mm -hmm. Um and this ooh, this this could interest me. Really, it's gonna be one of the really more in um uh, interesting visual Imperial armies because there'll yeah, be a yeah. diverse range of very unique, interesting miniatures. Yeah, Some older ones in there, like the, the death the death watch will be a little bit Yeah, yeah. Death Watch, Same. I mean Grey Knights, they'll, they'll also turn up, the, you the know? sisters will look nice because they're new models, but the grey knights yeah. again the, you look at them and go, Oh mm -hmm. don't be old. <laughs> yeah. but then it's got the really like cool the... ones from like the Galapox, whoever the yeah, Galapox people yeah. thought, why what they were called. No, the, uh, the star, star breaches. That's them, yeah. Oh, the Star Jammers from X Men. Diverse, yeah. isn't it? And the fact you can like put together so many different styles of army with this, mm. you know, mm. and you Naval can include breaches. them in other Imperial armies, right? So you can have them in Space Marine armies or in yeah. Astra Militaria armies or whatever, or Sisters of Battle armies, which is great. Mm -hmm. But it's not all good. No, it's not. What? Did, what? What? Why? What have they done? So they released a brand new Inquisitor Lord Cortez. Yeah. 
Is he based on someone? Because I think I saw the same model, but the like a, a, a earlier edition, and it looked yeah. way better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Cody has had a had a, a model in. Uh, when was the last Imperial Agents Codex released? It was it. Uh, well, it I think the last one came out maybe about six years ago, seven years yeah, ago. Yeah, I can't remember. It fifth, sixth, if, third, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's even. And he had a miniature back, back then, which was actually not bad. No, it's it's a really nice looking mini. But for um, some reason, they've really dropped the ball on this one. It, it just doesn't... There's something about it that's wrong, isn't there? It just doesn't flow at all. Well, to me, visually, it looks like... You know when you get a baby and you have one of those like mm -hmm. uh, winter suits <laughs> where you put... It, it's a onesie and you zip them up and they can't yeah. really move and they look like the Michelin Donut Man. Looks a bit like yeah. him. The yeah. The problem is that they have tried to realistically create what a human wearing power armor looks like. Yeah. And as Why? a result, it's not good, is it? No, they could have done something really interesting with the design in order to. Uh, um, it doesn't I mean, look like he'd be able to fight it, though. Like no, a space no. marine looks like he can fight in power armor. This guy looks like he'd be awkward, clunky, and yeah. he'd die very quickly to anything. Yeah, yeah his big, big chunky baby legs. Yeah, it's, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So Duncan's done a really good um, kit bash with him. And mm -hmm. it's better. What did he do with it? Do you remember? Like the basics? Changed the pose, uh, just kind of made it look a little bit more dynamic. What did um, he like cut the legs and like splay them or something? Or... Um, mm -hmm. I'll find the picture for you. Uh, I do have it saved on here. Really, Daffod? Was it that long ago? Third edition? No Jeez. way. That God Almighty, right. that that's a shocker! Wow, from my what, my terrible memory, that better. sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, the third edition mini is way better. It's way better because I'm pretty sure when I I think you and Griff talked about this when this figure first was announced, and I think one of you put the image in the the chat, and I was like, that looks yeah. like a very old mini. Yeah, and it looked it's great though. It's yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, yeah. It's, it's I like this two-headed bird, bird, though. The bird's nice. Yeah, the, the bird's bird is nice. really nice. I like the idea that it, the bird, but... uh, at least one of the heads, probably asks why it's still alive. <laughs> and it wants to no. die. One asks. Um, <laughs> one only tells lies. The other only tells <laughs> the truth. Exactly where I was going. That's exactly where I was going. One tells the truth. The other always lies. I tell the truth. He always lies. I've I do not. The... I tell the truth. Oh, what a lie! <laughs> Uh, Labyrinth is great. I don't care what anyone says. It is. I love it. I've stuck the the original picture in now of a little personal Facebook messenger. What? Thing. A, I mean, it's very unusual for them to drop the ball this hard with a character mini in forty k. Yeah, it's very it is strange. Unusual. Um, I mean, it's often the case that you know, if you don't like it, you don't like the aesthetics or whatever. But the miniature's still well done. You know, mm -hmm. that is not to me that isn't well designed at all. No, it it looks half finished. One of the big problems is, especially around the legs, he looks like he's wearing Stormcast armor, not 40k armor. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like little chunky dude wearing... If you stuck a beaded head on that, that looks like a dwarf. <laughs> yeah, I can see that, yeah. Or the whatever, the, the Votan. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it just... It doesn't get across any kind of sense of scale or anything like that. It just looks so short and dumpy. Yeah. But also really bland. I think that's the... The yes, main it's those that... big plates, isn't it? Those yeah. big plates of armor that haven't got anything going on whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't... If he was, mm. if he came out in a, um, you know, uh, a star collecting box, you know, one of the, it, it's the Imperial Guard versus the Eldar for 11th Ed, you know, you could kind of get away with it. If it was like an easy Could you? Snap for it. Mm. Uh, you know, you, you'd be less... Because I, it, it, well, it, it, to me, this wouldn't be like. To me, it doesn't look like a, a box set pusher, which you know sometimes those no, characters no. are like a box set pusher. To me, yeah. this just kind of no. looks like. This is it mean to say it looks like something you get free with a magazine? Like you get this in White no, Dwarf? No, that, I, I completely get you. Yeah, yeah. Compared to the other stuff that we used to at this point, standards wise, it's just yeah. this. Uh, it's just very not, low bar. It's but it, it just feels like it's there, gone it? back ten years. I think that's the the main thing. Mm. You know. It's, Unless a, it's, a, it's a rare ball drop, isn't it? Mm. In that regard, they've really like mm, they've bished on this one. 
I wonder if it is like 10, 12 years old and they just kind of found it. And went, it's oh. kind of like, oh, I've got to get it out somewhere. I haven't really just chuck it out now, you know. Come on, baby, Paul. Do you want to eat another meatball? Oh, come on. <laughs> got the, to be uh, strong for mum. <laughs> the next story I've named, and that's why they call me Death Company. Oh, I, yeah. Is this the the, uh, the Auto Xenos Battle Force? Because uh, I think that's not a bad box, almost. No, no. I just uh, don't like the giant storm bird. I wish that wasn't in there. And I wish I wish yeah. it was something else. Because I don't, I don't, I'm not a big fan of flying units in in no, 40k no. anyway. And that's a big, that's a big plane. That's a big one, isn't it? It's a big yeah. old flying unit that is. And it's a shame because I like the rest of it. I mean, the, again, Death Company kind of old, but then you've got yeah. uh, the, the the Inquisitor dude with the little dragon bird thing on his arm, which is neat. And yeah. then you've got the servitor and those guys and then he, and then the star jammers uh which look great mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's an it's interesting a big old plane force as well isn't it they're, they're, yeah it's, everything's so unique everything's such a an individual in that in that box set it's cool if you could swap out the stormbird for something mm-hmm. assuming that you two are like myself and don't love the stormbird what would you swap it out for oh god um you know what would look good with this force? You know, I mean, stealing from the Adeptus uh, Sararitas, that the Exorcist tank. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Would look, great. would look great with this force. Penitence engine is that what it's called? Yeah. Something that'd be, like that'd that. be okay. Yeah. Like Gruff, what do you think? Yeah. What would you like to see instead of the Stormbird? Are, are you are you Stormbird positive? No, no. I think the Stormbird looks bloody awful. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with the Stormbird is it's got this obvious design aesthetic where they took the 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 dropship from aliens and over the last 30 years it has evolved and changed but it hasn't changed enough and what it looks like now it looks like a mishmash Mm -hmm. now if you replace that with any of the flying units from the admech army as a personal carrier i would be up for that because those things Mm -hmm. look amazing just something more redolent of like the um the religious elements of this box set would suit me. It doesn't look like it fits that well. Do you, mm. you want something really yeah. ornate and ostentatious yeah. and gold, yeah. probably because exactly. it's an inquisitorship? Yeah. Absolutely, that's what you want, right? With, yeah, with purity seals and oaths and things all over it. it maybe it just it, it's a it's a ship that's like a double headed eagle ship. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. Like that. yeah. It's redolent of the double-headed eagle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you look um, at it and you're like, oh, fuck, it's the Inquisitors. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, exactly. You look at fuck. it and like, oh, shit. Oh, no, no. Right, what you do is you release this. It's exactly the same, only you don't have wings on it. And instead, you've just got great big um, hummingbird wings and you release it as an Inquisitor or Dethropter. What, well, like, then... um, like Dune? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> Or 17 drop pods. I just, oh, there's I two other sets as well. Yes. Yeah, I, is it? I'm stupid. Oh, oh, actually, hang on. Oh, the that's, oh, there's, uh, oh, of course. Yeah, because the different Ordos. Yeah, that makes the sense. Ordo Malia set is, again, almost good. It's got the yeah. silly man who I don't like in his baby <laughs> armor. It's got old <laughs> Grey Knights, which are fine. And it's got the, mm-hmm. the two sets of the uh, the normal humans, which is that's fine as well. Mm-hmm. And then it's got like a 3,000-year-old um, Chimera. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is so old. I've got one, but bless it, it's uh, it's, it's doing the Lord's work. It's, it's got the one dude from uh, the uh, the Blackstone Fortress set in as well, the the Flamer. Yeah, yeah the other oh, one so did as well. Is. It had the um, it had the uh, Navigator, the previous one. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Who's cool. next to the Chimera in the background? I can't really I'm tell. Sure, I think that's a, a Calexus Assassin. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Ooh, yeah, Calexus, yeah. Interesting. I'm just Interesting really happy because the Ordo Hereticus one has my favorite Inquisitor of all time because she that's, has the this, this is the best set. Yeah, that's, that's the, this best is the best set. set. Easily. Mile. Only for so the top well. hat. <laughs> yeah, best Inquisitor, right? You've got pretty cool sisters of battle. You got the weird, yeah. stupid sister of battle tank. You've got another set of the, the humans. Preacher. You've got a preacher who's who's not done anything, anything naughty, I'm sure Fortress. in his past. And then you got Arbites, Arbites. Arbites. I'm going to yeah. bite your bodies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a cool, like, thematic set, that is, isn't it? And then, uh, yeah, an Inquisitor. If, if, 
if I'd if I'd say like, wouldn't it be cool if each box set had one different assassinorum in? I think that'd be mm. kind of nice. Since we got the the Calador in the last one, I, yeah, I, I, the last one. I, I'd yeah. like I'd. I'd like the the uh, the ever saw in here because he's yeah, a psychopath yeah. and that'd be kind of fun. <laughs> he's maybe not the most effective, but it's like he's but he funny. would fit, wouldn't he? Yeah, he'd fit with this lot definitely. Yeah, he's Barry from Birmingham. He's the drug. <laughs> <laughs> Drop in Barry. He's a good lad, but he's fucking nuts. <laughs> We've sent Barry down with a glass ball. They'll die in days. <laughs> it's Barry and everyone. Everyone stay away from Barry. He's out of fear, right? <laughs> Shall we move on to the Blood Angels? Yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not? So, yeah, the Blood Angels are... Uh, Codex Supplement yeah, Blood Angels is yeah. being released. Imminent. Interesting. Mm. I mean, I hope they get something a little bit more oomph this time round, yeah? Yeah. In terms of their army and whatnot, because they've always been... They've been given short shrift in, pre in, like, lots of recent editions of 40k, especially in comparison to the Dark Angels. The Dark Angels seem to get, like, all the, all the stuff. Yeah. The mm. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm really liking this uh, uh, Blood Angels box set. The the fact yeah, that you have the Chaplain, Chaplain the Marty's back and he looks yes, great. The, cha the Chaplain That's looks good. really good. We've had yeah, Chaplains yeah, yeah. in the past, like the beginning of Tenth with his long robes, which I was like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and Now this this one looks like a, a proper a proper uh, a good Chaplain design. Yeah, yeah it does. I don't know how I feel about the weird vampire dude. Oh, Astaroth. Is that who this one is? Damn, mm -hmm. Astaroth. Yeah, he's. Astaroth, that is. I don't. On one I, hand, I don't I really know. Like the Bram Stoker armor. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hundred percent. That's Bram Stoker. Yeah. Well, I guess. I guess it's Mephiston as well because yeah. Mephiston had that kind of armor design as well. But uh, yeah. The downside, I think, is, and it's down to the paint job. That face looks really old. It looks like it's been taken off of like a ninety-nine era miniature. Hmm. And I think the reason for that is it's because it has no eyebrows and it has the vampire teeth, and it just I mean, gives this weird look. Uh, I like meant, it, but I think it's, it's meant to be a mask. Yeah, not, yeah, yeah. It's not distinct enough from the previous miniature. That's my big problem. It's just this. It's basically the same. It's just a bit bigger. Mm -hmm. There's not much different. Is it the pose as well? I don't know. Maybe the, maybe the pose for me isn't like he's just got the axe above his head. It's yeah. not super. It's like um, Dante. Dante was in this kind of similar pose where it's like one foot on a thing, mm -hmm. and he's kind of half ass jumping. Maybe yeah. maybe instead he it would be a bit cooler if the the axe was already brought down in the ground and you had the earth kind of shatter. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. But maybe they'd want to have it a, a mini that's meant to look in motion. Rather than one that's finished its motion, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think the biggest... see what they've gone for. They're looking yeah. for because he's he's the executioner of the blood angels, right? His whole stick is that he gives peace to those that are lost to the black ray, so he decapitates them. That's the his whole <laughs> shtick, and that's what they've gone for. Mm -hmm. But like I say, he is not distinct enough from the previous miniature for me. He looked almost almost the same, just bigger. Yeah, yeah. I think that one of the biggest problems with it is that the way that they've photographed it, because if you look at it in the other photos, you can see that mm -hmm. it, it does have a good bit of movement to it. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. when you take a photo of it straight on, it looks so yeah. flat. Do you think it's the white background it's on as well that doesn't I help think, it? I don't think that helps, no. no. Probably, yeah. But then you get the actual Death Company Marines, and I'm happy because I've never seen this many haircuts in a Space Marine chapter before. <laughs> <laughs> the variety of haircuts and that that's one of the benefits of getting of being in the death company right mm -hmm. yeah it's not just short back and sides for these guys no, yeah, you it, get it, the haircut you want because otherwise you're gonna get cut down and eaten right yep yep I'm gonna... oh it's not realistic though why don't they have the helmet on they don't care they don't, they don't care. care. They don't care. Also, they exist in a sci-fi fantasy universe yeah so. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah, demons and things running around. So. There's a couple of baldies, and there's one guy who looks so. Oh my god, his face is amazing! It's the bald guy with his mouth <laughs> wide open, and you need to be more specific. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say which one's that. <laughs> um, he's got. I say he's got a chainsaw. Oh, that doesn't help. He's got bolted. Got black armor. <laughs> he doesn't have a jump pack, and he is underneath um, a guy who's got proper Roman curly hair. 
Oh, is he yeah, the, yeah, the, the, one you the slightly uh, tanned skinned yes. one next yeah. to the really pale dude? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. He yes. looks like someone I've seen in a movie. Yes, I know. <laughs> I don't know who. I can't remember who, but he looks like a medi- medieval fantasy or like a gladiator style movie, but I don't know who. I was yeah, thinking, um, do you remember the wrestling team, the um, the Oddities? No. Okay. That was before me, I think. All right. Um, yeah, there's there's something <laughs> there. <laughs> I will say, like, if you're a vampire counts player, you should probably oh, oh, try and yeah, pick up these will. heads because these heads are yeah. arguably a lot better than some of the vampire count heads. <laughs> Because a lot of the vampire counts has have very um, ostentatious hairstyles. These are just more like, oh, you're a you're a normal lad, uh, but you're yes. a vampire. You're a you vampire, know? right? Oh, I mean, no. I just like the fact this is the release set as well. They've gone for the the the, the death company. That's kind of yeah, cool. that's kind of neat. It is, it is. I mean, that obviously means this is going to be one of the detachments, right? This is going to be like a, a dedicated yeah, yeah. detachment, yeah, so yeah. you can take a whole army of death company, which is kind of fun. I'm just happy I've seen a space marine with '90s curtains. That's, nah. That just makes me happy. He looks like he was the uh, the son in Home Improvement. All in running poses too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which makes they, sense. they've done the with the the assault marines. They've done that thing I really don't like with assault marines, and it's it's just like Astaroth. It's just one little foot on a little stone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, w- I won't ever say that I want them to have the clear plastic stands, uh-huh. but I didn't we talk about this before when we, we have, said yeah. it would be a good idea to do like the the boost effect. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I think I think we still need to maybe aim yeah. for doing that in the future. No, mm-hmm. we can't do it. Not not yet, at least. Unless you were for GW growth and you haven't told <laughs> us. <laughs> I, if I did, you'd know. Uh, yeah, because the there'd be even more rats in Gruff's home. Yeah. <laughs> there'd be five hundred rats. Uh, there'd be uh, nothing but dwarfs, as far as the eye can see. <laughs> Some of them would have clothes. Oh um, my god! Yeah, you get the brutal strip. Oh. The upgrade set as well. Mm, the upgrade, oh, yeah. upgrade set's really nice. Oh, that's cool. That it's is really nice, good. Isn't it? That um, power arm with the power sword is really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, like I don't that. know what it is about that, but I really like that having that extra uh, oomph to it. Oh, oh, the, isn't that an aggressor's arm? Could well be. I don't know. I don't know my crappy Space Marines enough. <laughs> aggressors. <laughs> Silly aggressors. <laughs> Never status. Yeah, the the brutality. Is there anything different with this brutalis dreadnought, or is it just like a, a, another just one? The death Company brutalis dreadnought. You know, so it has the rules of the brutalis, but it has the Death Company detachment rules. That would be my guess. Yeah, yeah, but the mini's the same, right? It's not yeah. got any like extra yeah. grimbles or greebles to plop on. So anyway, okay. I think they may have added like a Blood Angels icon on the left pauldron there. Oh yeah. Yeah, the skull and crossbones thing. Yeah. Ah, okay. I wonder. That, that, that'll, that'll just be a glue on piece, right? That'll yeah, just be like it's just a very yeah. minor addition. That is. That's fine. Um, yeah. I mean, if you've ever seen the rules for the brutalis, the notion of a death company one is terrifying. I hear the brutalis is pretty devastating. It's a monster. It's a real nightmare to take down. That is because it's in. You see, it's in the Leviathan box set, so it's supposed to be the equivalent of the um, the Carnifex, the Screamer Killer. Mm, yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty badass. Pretty is badass. It, is it not like uh, dangerous to have like a Brutalis Dreadnought in a death company in the idea that it looks like it has a talon of Horus? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a fair point. Well, you, you know, know? looking at it like side eye and thinking <laughs> <laughs> mm. You're big yeah. like Horus, you have a talon yes. like Horus, you're black like mm. Horus, so I don't know. Yes. <laughs> mm. Considering like the death company don't see reality, you know, no, yeah. when he saw at the end of his life, so it's like they also, yeah, they could easily mm. mistake that for Horus. Yeah. Very yeah. easily. If it moves like yeah. Horus, causes heresy like Horus, slices like Horus, it must be Horus. Oh man, the artwork for the special edition is really good. It is nice, isn't it? Beautiful, I mean, isn't it? It is old artwork. It's from something else that is. Is it? Fed. I don't know oh. what. I can't remember. That's a, that's is, a shame because that's really good. I thought that was brand yeah. new. Damn. No, it's not brand new. That I think that's from the ninth Fed special edition. But that's it's a little still- sad, but uh, yeah, it, I'd say it's leaps and bounds. No, no offense yeah. to the artist that did the, the standard cover, but it's leaps and bounds over the standard edition. Yeah. The the great thing is there's two different 
art st- uh, art covers as well. It's like mm-hmm. there is a distinct difference. It's not just yeah. oh, the special edition is just the normal cover, but without Warhammer Forty Thousand on the top and the <laughs> Codex on the bottom, which was always super lazy. <laughs> so this uh, is a nice distinct variation. Which uh, I'm down for. That's nice. That is cool, and I'm you know obviously going to pick it up. I'm interested to see how it works. Special edition or standard edition, though? Not you mean? Spe- I'm not. I'm not yeah. into the Blood Angels enough for the, the special <laughs> edition. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of intrigued. I've got a soft spot for them. I like the Blood Angels. I like the Blood Angels. They're always fun. bring back the Black Pauldron liner. <laughs> what I say? I think they look. Not, me and uh, Big D were talking about this before the show. Uh, and we both agree we prefer Blood Angels to have the, the pauldrons with the black ring yeah, around them. Mark, I think it was yeah. a bad idea to get rid of it. Yeah, it mm. just it breaks it up. It's too red. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we move on to some dwarfs? Yeah. New dwarfs, too. Yeah. Right? Nude. Nude dwarfs, yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> um. <laughs> well, guys, I'm going to have to bow out now. I do apologize for signing off early. No um, but this has been absolutely brilliant guys in the chat yeah. thanks for uh you know listening along to us uh i'll be back soon guys okay no worries man no worries you look after yourself I come judge not a problem hang on where am i there we are okay guys <laughs> bye 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 so yeah we've got some uh some dwarves to hit which is we're dwarf. not gonna make out now now that we're alone He's now a tongue. Um, yeah, so we've got the, the dwarf thing with the, the handgun, which is a really nice looking dwarf, although I do think the helmet oh, is a bit too much. Well, why is it too much? Like too tall, the wings? Yeah, I think the wings are just too big. Okay. You like the design, but you just want to like control T and just shrink the them. Yes. How about how much? Like 10%? Twenty percent. Yeah. 20%. Okay, that's it's not too bad then. That's yeah. all right. Yeah, just just a little bit, just a little yeah. bit down. Um, I I hate the guy that painted this. He's well, a dick. Oh, because the look at look shit, at that beard. Yeah. Look at the highlight on the beard. Yeah, that's sickening. on every whisker. What yeah. an asshole. <laughs> it's too good. Absolutely sickening. How uh, yeah. How much they've done there. That's ridiculous. And the highlighting on his fucking fantastic pipe. Mm-hmm. Well, and he's got a cool pipe. That's amazing. <laughs> It's uh, a super good design. I really oh, like is. this one. Yeah. Well, I love what they're doing with the dwarves in the old world. They're uh, they're really mm. taking the idea of them and just running them into a new direction. So that they're, they're obviously still old world dwarves. They're still Warhammer dwarves, but they've just got this real fresh look to them in a way that mm, the, yeah. the Bretonians didn't have and the Orcs didn't have and the Tomb well, didn't have. Uh, I th- is it fair to say cuz I think so, like the newer units for them may- I don't mm. know. Do you not think some of the the new produced things didn't have that? Like for the um the the undead skeleton dragon thingy. Yeah, I mean it was it was good. Don't get me it wrong. It just didn't. It, you it, think it, it's it didn't missing some of the magic? Yeah, okay. It, um, I thought the, the new Bretonian stuff was good. There was nothing wrong with it, but it didn't grab me. Ah, it's French, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, wouldn't well, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the way it's like. Uh, Ungrim Iron Fist over here. That model is gorgeous. And I think he's, what it is, he's never looked this good. Never. No. Not even in Total War Warhammer. He doesn't look this good in that game. And there's a, a reason I think that the new dwarfs look so good. And it's um it's a really weird weird reason. Mm-hmm. They've got thighs now. They got what, sorry? Thighs. Oh, thighs. Yeah. Oh. Warhammer dwarfs, the way that they've always been sculpted is that they have the tiniest, stubbiest little legs. They've got barely any thigh. They've got yeah. It's it's they, there's no knee joint. It's just like stick and then foot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these guys have actual <laughs> thighs. And They're actually result, people. <laughs> yeah, and it just works really well. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love that original Lion Fist mini. I've got one. Um, it's made by a human hand, so the, yeah. um, it, in, uh, as uh, again, as I was talking with Big D, there's something about things that were made not by computer, but by a human man or a human mm-hmm. lady by sculpting just clay. I think is way more impressive than a yeah. really good sculpt from a 3D printer, or, uh, a, th- a 3D program. Yeah, but yeah. still, it doesn't detract from how good these models look. No, at all. no, no. It's I think it's because there's no imperfections in them. <gasps> look at it. Yeah, look at that OG one. Oh, he's good. His, his fist, which is bigger than his face. Yeah. I love it. 
Me too. Me too. I'm, I'm never ever going to say anything bad about no. uh, the, the late eighties to early two thousands Warhammer dwarfs. They just look the shit. Yeah, <laughs> they are great. They've done a great job updating the axe as well because the axe design is the same or very, mm. very. You know, no, it's very similar, but it's got a lot of the. I like how they've highlighted it with like a gold outline. Yeah, yeah. To make it pop a little bit more, which is again very dwarfy. It is. It's always oh, it's pretty. It's so pretty. Yeah. Um, and then of course you're going to get the Prince oh Arthur's Dragon Company, which are those out- the five thousand year old dwarfs that was like from the the forties. Nineteen eighty five. These ones came out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly at at. Mm. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird because I almost feel like these shouldn't, these shouldn't have been done because these these look so out Far of removed. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 don't look like they're old world. They look like they're that. If you threw these into Dogs of War, I could believe that. Well, that's kind you of know? what they are. the The Dragon Company is kind of a Dogs of War. They're Imperial dwarfs, dwarfs who have left the ah. dwarf worlds and gone to live in like the Empire. And you know they're, they're raising a unit out of the dwarfs who live in Old Old Dwarf or wherever it is, right? But you, because it's like you're releasing dwarfs, you release these alongside them. But realistically, yeah. probably should play them with an empire army, yeah, but yeah. not with a dwarf army. Yeah, I mean you, you could do okay. either, but yeah, but they, they I mean they, they predate Warhammer, as such. Yeah, yeah, they they predate yeah. Warhammer Fantasy Battle. It's uh, it's crazy, but they are <laughs> such a such a beautiful blast from the past, and I, I had to really fight down the urge to put a pre-order in for them. What stopped you? Was it just money in the end? Yeah, I, it was money in the fact that I have a lot of scaven to get through. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, one of the things I am very, very harsh with myself is I do not start anything new whilst I've got something on the on the table. Oh, that's that's smart. Yeah, not it, a lot of people do that in the hobby. No, I have to. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely have to, or else. Things get silly very quickly. That makes sense. What do you think of the Goblin Hewer? The what now? The War Machine. Slightly further down. Oh, where where just throws axes? Yes. I think the idea of that is very silly and Mm. quite fun. Yep. Efficiency-wise, you know, a bolt thrower, uh, an organ gun are way more effective. Uh, But I think if you were running like a Slayer army, this would be work law to me mm-hmm. i don't i don't know why law wise this seems a lot more like something a slayer army exclusively would have i the, i this don't know is why a really weird one because this should in law and this is something that they've changed in law malachi may make the slayer engineer created this but that he, makes sense yeah he, he hasn't been born yet so what oh. they've said is that he may not have actually invented everything he said he did it may be that he just took old designs that have fallen out of favor and revamped them right that's the that's the law reason yeah. they're going for right yeah. but the 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 normal reason is just we wanted to re-release this kit absolutely yes realistically okay yeah, because the goblin hero is great fun yeah it's just stupid <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderfully stupid yeah i it looks like it's it's a thing that could possibly work not well if it was made in real life it looks like something that could potentially function mm-hmm. in some form because you've got a bike chain on it and stuff <laughs> i love the fact you you have like uh, uh goblin counters with axes yep. stuck in them as well that's very that i don't think they do that now no no for some reason but i i like them that's so much fun i love the slayers that come with it they just look so good it kind of makes me think of what Snorri might look like. I don't think this mm. is what Snorri looks like, either of those two, but in my head, when I heard the audiobook description of him, for some reason, especially the one with the the one on the, the left, mm-hmm. that's kind of how I pictured Snorri. Yeah. You just need to have nails instead of a crest, and you've got yourself yeah. a Snorri. Yeah. yeah. Ah. <laughs> Should we move on to some AOS and burn through these? There isn't that much to go through as such. Sure. Um, the first one, of course, is that there is a brand new Warhammer World diorama, which oh, is damn. holy crap. So obviously, as they always do, a new edition comes out, they make a new diorama to celebrate it. And this one is a 
huge great big tower that is being fought over by the Skaven and the Stormcast. And I have spent many a minute just going through everything that's here. It is really nice. Are they doing a thing like find the not Skaven? <laughs> no. Like find no. the assassin? No, thankfully not. Did they ever do a thing where uh, they made a, a diorama against the undead and hide one Skaven in it? And be like, <laughs> where's the Skaven? To be honest find with you. Find it to save the There's a, <laughs> um, a full diorama in Warhammer World of one of the um, uh, Bone Reaper cities. Oh, neat. Right, and you've got like them all marching and lockstep and everything. It's really, really cool. And there's Mm. so much stuff in that as you walk around it that there could well be a Skaven in there. Ah, that'd be fun. If you go around to the back of it, they've cut out a hole in one of the areas, and it's just this room where a guy is pulling the bones out of somebody. (laughs) As you do. Yep. Ah, yeah, This uh, I'm I'm watching the video for this diorama. It, It looks like Vermintide. Or mm-hmm. uh, some a lot of the levels in near the end of the Vermintide games. Yeah, it's really, it's very good. What a shock, right? Spires of the Nore. It. Uh, I would love to see a full blown somebody sitting there for an hour and a half talk, telling you about everything they did to make it. Oh, that'd be great. I wonder. Yeah, there must be like if you went to Warhammer World, there must be one of these guys uh, you I've, could probably talk to. I would hope. I've been twice, and I've never seen anyone that I could wrestle to the really? ground. Really? Yeah. Oh. Did meet Duncan once, though. That was nice. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. yeah, this is this is when when are you when are you going to plan to go and see this then in Poison? I was hoping to try and get out that way before the end of the year, but I probably mm. won't be able to do that now. I don't think. Okay. Hopefully next year. Hopefully next year I can get back down to bring out your lead and go and see it again. Well, if you are a listener of the Fluff and Hammer and you go to Warhammer World, send us images and put them on the Discord, please. Pretty please yeah. on the Discord or the Facebook or just tag us on Twitter. Take a uh, take a picture of you doing a thumbs up next to it, mm-hmm. something, and wear a fluff and hammer shirt, which are on sale now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of horrible things, let's move oh, no. into some Narwood Wall Cry, Wall Cry, War Cry, because um, we've got a uh, a new War Cry team coming with a a bone I mean, horseman. Is this, is this not out yet? I'm sure we talked about this ages ago. I think this is on its way out now. It's uh, damn. It feels like it's been a while since uh, we originally saw this because I remember the the bee lady and the horse and the weird dog thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the weird dog thing. Weird dog thing's yeah. probably the best thing in there, to be honest. What do you think of Horseman? Uh, the, the, it's like the usual Arciarch Bone Reaper stuff. It's mm-hmm. just uh, it just doesn't do it for me mostly. No. Do, Though, do, do, oddly enough, if you if you look at the the top half, it looks like a, a character from the Skeleton Warrior cartoon. It does. I actually thought it looked then. like he'd stolen M. Bison's chin. Oh yeah, yeah, he's got a big bum chin, mm-hmm. which is impressive for a skeleton to have. To be fair, I just like the fact that somebody sat there and decided, "Well, we're going to make a centaur, but I'm going to make it really hard for myself and have nothing that's going to hide the fact that this doesn't work." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure to make it all bones, you madman. You it's are. fine. They're special bones, the special <laughs> magic bones. It's all right. Yeah, yeah the Asiarchs still continue to be eh, yeah, yeah for me. Yeah, they're, they're all right. But uh, it's just yeah, the infantry I like still, and then everything else I'm like, mm, I'm mm-hmm. all right. All right. Uh, moving on to some Hellcrown Blues because the battle for Hellcrown is nearly oh, over. Oh no! Oh yeah, this is what Big D was talking about yeah. earlier, right? Uh, uh, so right now the Stormcast is sitting at thirty-seven point six, Skaven at sixty-two point four. Woof! Yeah, it's a good win. It it kind of feels like um, whatever the last kind of campaign was against the uh, for the Indominus Crusade. You know when they yes. had like the Tyranids versus the Space Marines, and the yeah. Tyranids were whipping them. It yeah. almost feels like the community is going like, no, fuck the main. Guys, we want the, the other things to win for something interesting to happen. Uh, it's uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I really like the fact that there's a full story of what's going on here. You know, the uh, mm. there there is a narrative to it that's really coming out. Um, well, in a kind of cynical aspect, how truthful do you think these stats are? Because if the Stormcast just won, narratively, we just kind of ruin things yeah. in a lot of ways so do you th- do you think there's a well, small amount of fudging well i um when i played my uh figure spearhead in the warhammer store when i was 
given, uh, I, I won with the Skaven, so I mm. put that result up. And you did see there was a slight change. In the time okay. it took me from doing that, it went up like 0.1%. Mm. So I don't know. I don't know. Because it, it definitely could fudge it. It could be completely legit. No one could be tampering with it. Or, yeah. you know, it could be tweaked. I, I I don't know. I don't think it really matters at the end of the day. No. Because uh, the most important thing is how interesting is the story that comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And you seem to be enjoying it, so that's the main thing, really. I am. I really am. And that map that they've done to go with it is gorgeous. I really like the Hellcrown map. Mm. I don't know what it is. It just mm, it, it sings to me. That's the type of thing I want to see more of in AOS. The uh, Island of Teeth. Yes. I don't want to go there. <laughs> the Isle of Soot. The Twin Barrels. Excellent. The Reeve. Geist Clay. That's a good name. Rendcut Shear, Mount Telari. Yeah. I noticed the Skaven haven't gone to Island of Teeth yet either. No, no. Uh, they've uh, they've completely taken over the Grits, the Splint, Sabre District, the Scabs, the Gilder District. Um, the yeah. city stuff, basically, right? Yeah. Which makes sense, because that's probably where they're all kind of swarming from, for mm. the most part. I think they've the broken through the, uh, the Broken Jewel, and that's... Ironic. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, the, the ruins of once mighty forts become a confusing warren of nests in which clan rat war swarms gather in preparation for a final assault upon the beleaguered hmm. defenders of the fortress city itself. What I think is quite funny that's come out of this is um, there was a one of the cities of Sigmar that was done at the end of the Dawnbringer Chronicles. Um, so there were really, there was a lot of celebration. You know, this was the, the last of the Dawnbringer Chronicles cities. We have done it. We have brought order to the wilderness. And then the Skaven city just blew right through it. It didn't get no. invaded. The Skaven <laughs> Blight city just came up underneath it and smashed it to bits. <laughs> uh, that makes me very, very happy. And a, a really cool thing that comes out of this um, is the experience of the assault on Hell's Claw, a free narrative supplement, which I've downloaded. I haven't read through it yet. I'm going to do that tonight. Mm. Is it just law? Yeah. Yeah, um, okay. but it's a lot of lore. It's a, it's a fairly weighty looking tome. You know, there's a, it goes into a lot of the stuff like uh, if you've ever pondered about the Griff Beast that the Lord Vigilant rides or how Rat Ogres are created, it's all in here. Hmm, okay, so, that's neat. Hmm. I was hoping to have read it before we recorded tonight, but I just did not get the time, unfortunately. Ah. But uh, yeah, all in all... I'm really looking forward to seeing what AOS looks like in the uh, the upcoming months because right now it looks like it's in a really strong place and I hope to hell that they keep it up. Do you feel like at the moment that AOS and 40k are getting equal share of the, the spotlight or do you think it's, um, you know, you, like whenever 40k gets the spotlight, it always feels like AOS kind of gets kicked to the yeah. curb like a horrible ginger child or something. It does. Uh, it do does. you think this is a bit more of a, a, a an even split at the moment? Not yet, but then scale. It's is it more in the uh, uh, AOS? More in the 40k. It's still stuff, 40k. Yeah. Okay. But literally, this box set's only it's been out less than a month. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So my guess would be that when the the books start coming out and we start seeing what the the narrative is going to be going forward, that's when we'll get a, a better idea of how this is going to work out. I'm mm. just really hoping that this doesn't end up being a... Um... Well, it isn't, because it, this one's come out of the, the gate swinging. Yeah. Dominion didn't. Dominion landed with yeah. a damp squib and didn't do anything. <laughs> um, but Skaven Tide has really come out the gate swinging, and it's doing a lot of really interesting stuff. Yeah, I guess the hope is it it continues to persist as well. Rather than, like yep. you say, just kind of... Because 40K does this as well sometimes, doesn't it? It has its box set, and then nothing really happens. Yeah. And then at the end, something eventually finally happens, and that's yeah. it. Well, they, I think they learned from 10th Ed 40K that having that space between the box being out and the next thing happening is a good idea. Because mm. it gives people time to just get their head around how the, the game's going to work, what's going on yeah. with it. It's a smart way of doing things. You know, people are getting games in with the the cards at the moment, and you know, you're getting an idea of how this feels because it is a very different game to how AOS has been in the past. I mean, it, it is a very different game. Mm. You know, it um, whilst the the very barest bones are the same. You know, the 
there is so much that you can do with the game now that it, it doesn't it's the least Warhammer a Warhammer game has ever felt. What about Rogue Trader? Mm, okay, except for Rogue Trader. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, even more so than like Battlefleet Gothic or something like that. It it yeah. feels very much it's it's its own thing. It is completely it's, it's, its own thing, and that's only a good thing. I, I love. How to stack up against other game systems? Would you say? Like Frostgrave and stuff. I mean, uh, depending how comparable they are, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's a difficult answer because Frostgrave, the other games I like, Frostgrave, uh, Necropolis 28, and Turnip 28, they're all very different. They've all got right. very different ways of doing things, very different feels. Like um, Necropolis 28 is less about winning the game and more about the, how do you put it, the changing diorama that you're doing. Yeah, mm. it's, it's all about the the hand feel and the, the eye feel of what you're doing rather than um, winning the game or doing some kind of great big multi-rule knowledge thing that allows you to do some crazy stuff. It's all about, you know, how cool and how in-depth it feels to be playing the game at that moment. Um, Turn of 28, of course, is Turn of 28, and it's just silly fun. It's, it's beautifully silly fun. Um, against Frostgrave, Difficult because Frostgrave, you only have nine miniatures, right? So, so it's way it, more it's it's more comparable to a Warcry than yeah, it is yeah. to AOS. Um, I mean, one page rules Age of Fantasy is you know it's so simplistic. It's it's good. It's a solid little system, but it's incredibly simplistic compared to uh, Fourth Ed AOS. Um, yeah, I mean, the best thing to do, I think, would be to put it up against Warhammer Fantasy Battle, and it beats any version of Warhammer Fantasy Battle in my eyes because it, it zooms past the game just flies yeah well you, you don't there's no point where you're just sitting around waiting for your opponent to finish his turn because you <laughs> you're sitting waiting for him to do something so you can then do something and then mm, yeah yeah there's a lot more back and forth that happens in the turns um there's a lot more uh tactical waiting rather than you know all right, I've finished all my stuff. Let me know if I need to roll any dice. Do they have any of that kind of um, interrupting turns with Necromunda? Because it seems like that would be... Uh, that no. and Warcry actually would have something similar. Uh, Necromunda, especially for some reason in my mind, would, yeah. would inject something like that in the future. Not to my knowledge. Not that I've ever hmm. come across. I could see maybe it'll be something that they test to see if it works here, mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll try and implement it into other things. Because I could definitely see them trying it with... If they haven't done it already, uh, Gene Sealer cults for 40k, yeah. I could definitely see them trying it for them. Oh, absolutely. Maybe Orc yes. tactics as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, Inquisitor. Yeah, the Inquisitor. Yeah. You can imagine like orbital bombardments coming down in your opponent's turn and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if it does well here, because it's what happened before, uh, didn't it? Because when Dominion came out, didn't 40k for 10th edition take some of the aspects of that edition yes, did yeah, yeah and then kind of incorporated into the rule set yeah but i think yeah so yeah, it, could be, it could happen again as well i think the the idea here is to have 40k and aos being very separate systems um, right yeah yeah there's always been that thing of being able to differ it's with some difficulty but being able to convert stuff from one system to the other um, mm. especially with the last sort of uh version of AOS and 40k that you could very easily move one thing from one to the other. Nowadays you can't. The two systems are very different. Right. Which yeah, it's it's no bad thing because they both have their own feel. I would say there's a, there's also the benefit of if they do feel kind of similar that you can just jump from one to the other without having to learn an entire mm. other rule set which also has its benefit. That's very true. But then it's it's too similar, you know, so yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah, yeah, just Playing the same game twice with different miniatures, then yeah, with oh, d this one does range, but my for a Warhammer army doesn't, or yeah. AOS army doesn't do range. Yeah. It's well, the difference. Shoot, yeah. Shooting its king in this uh, this version of AOS, like good lord. Well, I bet with the Skaven it would be. Yeah, <laughs> my god. You know they don't have uh, crossbows; they have a uh, lot worse than crossbows. Yeah, so sniper rifles. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Did they have the the rattling gunners? Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know. Um, Okay. Right now, it's hard to tell because the cards have everything that's already out. But my guess would be that the, when the Skaven book drops, there's going to be a 
big shake up of what you have and haven't got anymore. Because it'd be a shame if there was no rattling gunners, globadiers, you know, yeah, yeah, flamers, my, the the guys with the mining drills, mm -hmm. that kind of, those kind of guys. I actually think the doom wheels might get dropped. Not the doom. Just wheels, the sorry, standard. The, the doom flares. Sorry. Doom flares. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The doom flares are just small versions of the doom wheel. So yeah, yeah. I could see them dropping that. That would that'd be fine. I'd be uh, either that or like you create something in plastic at long bloody last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing the Doom Flayers were probably resin yes. or metal. Yeah, I think the, the Doom Flayers were resin. They're probably hard to get hold of. And, oh, know, probably, yeah. Not, not pleasant to put together. No, sir. They might just relegate Doom Flayers to like mounts for heroes, which I could see as well. Oh, possibly, possibly. Because uh, I remember it, you could put you can put Ikit Claw on a on a uh, flare. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Doom Flayer. So maybe they just work it like that, I suppose. I don't um, know. You'd be so top heavy. You'd just be like constantly trying to fall forwards. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> ah, Skavens, you know, they don't make things to last. Kind of like orcs and goblins. It's like, whatever. It'll work. It'll work. If it doesn't, it explodes. I'm really hoping that it can. And with Icky Claw, to be fair, his, his strategy was just drop a nuke on him. Mm -hmm. That'll do you. Yeah. I'm really hoping the Claw turns back up again because he's in one of the. Um, he's in the. The Claw? Uh, yeah, Icky Claw. Um, oh, Icky Claw. I thought you meant the Chloris and the Inspector Gadget character. I mean, either or, really. <laughs> but uh, he's in one of the uh, the Hamilcar books. Um, and ah. he's, he's the, he's a, so he survived as well? No, he's very dead. Uh, oh. <laughs> he's a ghost that goes around just haunting um, automated armor. <laughs> Which is amazing. And he's just stealing Stormcast and stealing like their, um, their powers of rebirth to keep himself going. It's a uh, it in uh, in AOS is like brilliant, so I'm really hmm. hoping he's going to turn back up on the uh, on the battlefield because what a what a great idea! Just this Why not mechanical rat body that's c controlled by a ghost? <laughs> yeah, spooky ghost rat in a robot suit. It's a winner in my eyes. <laughs> oh, you could have it like the destroyer armor, right from Thor. Yeah, yeah. Where you have a spirit possess a mech of some sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be all right. That could be quite cool. Oh, I don't it has to be like vermin lord sized just for my own personal yeah. amusement stomping on everyone it looks like the giant mech from uh because you mentioned it earlier labyrinth yes but it's a rat version yeah that could be fun and rats like a labyrinth <laughs> you do a night size warhammer 40k night size <laughs> <laughs> no thanks i've um I've already built a knight this year. I don't really want to try anything that size again. You haven't, you haven't built a rat knight, though, I have you? I haven't built a rat knight, no. Yeah. No, just looking at my uh, my Gene Steeler Titan going, it still doesn't look right. I need to do more to well, it. What's wrong? Oh, yeah, I mean, what mini isn't like that? Yeah, I very much so. You've got 74 fucking clan rats. Do them. Yeah, I am doing them. My Gene Steeler Spray and brown. They're done. <laughs> my Gene Steeler cult is, uh, is finished for now, because... Mm. The idea was I need to get this finished before uh, Skaven Tide comes out, and I got it finished the night before the uh, I went to pick it up. Damn! So, now you've got two Skaven Tides. <laughs> yes, because I'm a fool. <laughs> 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 With all that being said, then I think we're going to start drawing it to a close. Um, yeah. Thank you. For <laughs> First day, dead dead. Right up your thank mind you. already. And we will see you uh, next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Yes. Hey. I love the frequency. You will be
Joseph Fish Bob, you don't fish number is three and a half. You did you say fish number three and a half is the only number you must pay attention to. Oh, you must have got three and a half all the way. Destroyed that which offended the emperor. Victory for the righteous.